dun, dun, ba, ba. It's time for High Rollers. What I didn't want to that? do more of the Avengers theme in oh, case they didn't copyright. Okay, okay. Um, hello, everybody. It's a Sunday. <gasps> it's time to roll dice. <gasps> it is D&D Day <gasps> with us High Rollers. Hello, everyone. I am Mark Sherlock Humes, your Dungeon Master. I am joined this week by... We have Chris Trot and Kim Richards. Hello. Uh, and then on the other side of the table, we have Tom Hazel and Katie Morrison. Hey, what up, um, gamers? Uh, hello, everybody. We have no re this week. Unfortunately, some personal stuff going on, so no re anon this week. Um, but we're here. We're going to have re anon. Re anon. Re on. on. It sounds like a, a movement. The re. Yeah, the re. <laughs> no, don't make a movement. Don't movement do that. With don't re do that. as the helm. No, that would be dangerous. That would be chaos. A um, couple of quick things to talk about, and then we are going to jump into today's episode. Um, hey! Hi! High Hi. Rollers Live <laughs> Tour! Well, kind of the first tour. one. No, it's it's not a It's like the preliminary it's tour. Yeah. It's one show. You need two shows it's to make it a tour. One it's show, one so show. we need your help. One we need your help so to make far. it more. It will be a tour. What if, if maybe, if, one if. day, it's like... You know, we can say it's a, it's like a special preliminary tour mm. of Just one show. show only. Just say it's a show. One night only one tour. Show. I've said the tour that's only one night only. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, it. it's, it's possible. Um, Listen, it is. Uh, thank you very much, everybody who signed up for the pre-sale email and got your tickets on pre-sale as yeah. well. Um, we had a great um, first sale on that pre-sale. A lot of you managed to get your VIP tickets or get some seats uh, in the theatre. Um, General sale is now open um, and is going at a steady rate. Um, the last time I checked yesterday, late yesterday, there was only like literally a handful, maybe even less now, of VIP tickets left. Um, there are still plenty of good seats in the stalls and circle, um, but it is now available. You can literally go to the link. I'm sure there will be one in chat that goes right there to buy tickets. Yeah, um, and description and on YouTube. Yes. There you go, bam, in the description on YouTube as well. But go and grab your tickets to High Rollers Live. This is our show on September 17th yes. at the London Adelphi Theatre. West End. Um, in the West End. It's right by Charing Cross. We've already seen a huge amount of the High Rollers community are arranging like meetups. Everyone's yeah. making really exciting plans. we got some people coming in costume. Um, it's going to be a really, really fun time. It is going to be a... Uh, it's going to be set in Althea with the current campaign characters and mm -hmm. all of that good stuff as well. And there will be more information coming. Remember, if you sign up and you put your email in, you'll get all the notifications about any new updates and information as well well um but yeah go and grab your tickets now they are going to be on sale but yeah if you want to make sure you can come get them asap yeah um, love to see you yeah and bring your friends as well like we've got quite a few people who said that they're bringing their their flatmates or their partners or their friends or their siblings people who don't normally watch high rollers but they're bringing them along it's no up to us knowledge is needed yes. yeah it's still high rollers it's still Althea, but we're, we're gonna make sure it's open it's accessible for them it's entertaining yeah. it's gonna, gonna be we'll a, do that. a fun evening show you get to come out to london make a little day trip of it yeah people are coming in from america from australia from europe they're gonna come and have a from lovely Mars, little time from in the moon. london <laughs> the chances the of anyone coming from Mars, we're a million to one. They but said, still, they come. <laughs> yeah, any well, well, good you go, job. You're welcome. Good you're job. welcome. Um, but yeah, so that is the High Rollers live show slash tour. Uh, <laughs> Not a tour. <laughs> one night only. Um, you can and come and check you, that out. Yeah, if you do get your tickets, go head over to the Discord as well. There's an HR events uh, chat there now as well. So if you have tickets, you are planning on going down, uh, make yourself known. People would love to meet up with you and uh, plan an event around it. It'll be cool to see everyone in the Discord talking about it yeah. and having a great time. Please just be mindful of your personal details. Oh, uh, yes. Don't pop them in. But yeah, yes, there's yeah. lots of people there. That be safe, really be sensible. Them all yes. that good stuff but we'd love to see you please do come and check out the show like I said if this one is a success um, that means that we can look at doing it again in the future and we can look at doing things in different places but we need this one to be a success before we can even think about doing that so yeah. uh, we would love to make this a big success um, if you cannot wait until September and you're desperate to come see us 
This coming Saturday, we are going to be at Insomnia I-72, yep. uh, Saturday the 30th. We're going to be there. We've got a meet and greet during the show, like uh, in the show itself. Um, that is at 4 p.m., I believe now it's been confirmed. Our meet and greet, it did get pushed back a little bit. So 4 p.m., the meet and greet. And then uh, you can go over and the live show is in the evening. And you can go to that with a separate ticket. You don't need to have an Insomnia ticket to go to that live show. You can just get a high rollers ticket. Um, and we're going to be joined by... Special guests, uh, Jennifer English, a.k.a. Shadow Heart, God's Favourite Princess from Baldur's mm -hmm. Gate 3, as well as Aliona Baranova, the performance director of Baldur's Gate 3, um, also is a squirrel in Baldur's Gate 3, but Aliona's great. Um, they're really lovely. They've been a big fan of High Rollers. They've been very supportive. And, they're uh, very, very lovely humans. Very Wait, lovely not the humans. one I kicked. Huh? This girl? Yeah, that, oh, that one. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. Uh, but they are joining us, and it is set. That show is also going to be set in Althea, and that means Jennifer and Aliona are actually going to be playing brand new custom characters that they've made in Althea. Um, so they are going to be playing their very, this is going to be their first original D&D characters as well. Yeah. So yeah. very exciting stuff. Um, so yeah, if you can and you want to swing by, grab a last minute ticket, come along to see us at Insomnia. <laughs> There's still plenty of tickets for you to come and, uh, and enjoy that show. If um, Rhiannon was here, she said that if you come and meet me and give me your dice, I will bless them. Because apparently everyone's dice that she touches, they roll really well. Because yeah, she has, she can't. She, she cannot. Yep. There you go. She can't so take generous. the luck from you. So generous. She gives so it to you. So generous. Um, and then the only other thing is, uh, one last quick thing to say is that next Sunday, there will not be a regular High Rollers episode. We're going to be doing, because we've got Insomnia on the Saturday, uh, we are going to basically not going to be... We're we'll going to be, be dead. We're going to be dead. We'll, so we're we'll going to take off that dead. Sunday. Uh, so there will not be a regular High Rollers next Sunday. We will be back after that. Mark Humes. Will people be able to watch the Insomnia live show? Hopefully, yes. I believe it is being recorded. Yeah. And we always say hopefully because if there are any technical problems, yeah. footage can get corrupted or like be bad or the audio can be missing. The plan is for it to be recorded and that, that it will yeah. go up yeah. on YouTube and all We will that strive to do well. it. Yeah, the worst Insomnia case. Team are great, so. yeah. yeah, worst yeah. case. I imagine it will be. Yeah. yeah, it will go on YouTube, but it might just be just waveform. <laughs> it might just be audio only, but it will still be up there for we'll, people to watch it in the regular. We will do place. our best to we'll make do our sure best. Yes. Yeah. Where are my um, D20s? <laughs> With Whilst Tom looks for his D20s, um, yeah, Give so. No. Make sure you come and check it out. Like I said, the best way is if you can come and see it, come see it live. But yeah, we will hopefully try and get it up on YouTube uh, ASAP. Um, it depends on a lot of things. It might not be up right away, but we'll try and get Nothing it. Nothing beats ASAP. being there live, though, does it? Matter? Nothing beats being there live, Chris you Trot. You're quite us. right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna the not majesty of the theater. You cannot compare to the majesty of the theater. I love the German language. <laughs> 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 with that delightful <laughs> comment, we are going to play the intro and we're going to crack on with today's episode of High Rollers. Hell yeah, give me my D20s Let's back. go. Welcome back to Althea the Dragon Empire. Our heroes were rewarded with the deed to a large building and its surrounding land in the town of Ashen Rest. However, they quickly learned that this abandoned building had its own mystery. A spirit called the Scarred Lady haunted the building. After investigating the nature of spirits and the history of the former inn, the party decided to try and confront this spirit at night. During this investigation, Ophelia was possessed by the spirit and a 
battle ensued. As the spirit learned more of Ophelia's abilities and powers, the rest of the party attempted to calm her down or reach Ophelia's mind. But fueled by Ophelia's mystical blood rage, the spirit was in full control and lashed out, severely injuring some of the heroes, as well as unleashing haunting screams that cast a dark shadow over the minds of Xanthius and Rowan. Meanwhile, Ophelia battled against this possession within her own mind. Struggling to regain memories and assert herself, she eventually managed to calm the spirit and convince her to return to her body and let them help her get justice. With the battle over, the party slept to recover. However, the uncomfortable conditions of the Broken Inn and haunting dreams left some of the heroes in better condition than the others. In the morning, Xanthius and Rowan checked the broken Everlight outside of the inn and discovered it contained a prototype of the strange device that had been used in another streetlight and had caused energy from a fiendish planar realm to enter the material world and possess the living. And that was pretty much where we left things off last week. Yeah. With Xanthius and Rowan making the discovery of the sort of prototype disc mm. in the Everlight. It's like outside a four year old in. thing, this mm -hmm. one. About four years old, yeah. Um, um, okay. uh, it looks very much the same. You, you deduce that it had the same uh, purpose but it was uh, perhaps too strong, like it was, uh, it hadn't been, you know, uh, designed properly, it was it was maybe too strong or uh, was not quite completed. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And that is where we left things off, I believe. It is a <clears throat> brand new day. Forgive me, let me see what the weather is like. Okay. Oh, oh, the crucible uh, of fate. Oh. Is that... A, is that Changed by oh, seasons. We need to do that as well. It is. Oh, it is. I have tables for seasons. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it is a pretty bright. Uh, no, it, you know, there's not a strong breeze. There's no like strong wind or anything like that. It is a spring morning, so it's not warm, but it is dry. Um, Maybe a bit overcast, but no wind or rain or anything like that. Cardigan no. weather. Yeah, indeed. And indeed, crucible of fate time. I need everyone to roll a d6. Let us generate the pool. There's no way we're going to get as lucky as last Can time. Can I use a Genesis dice? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know why you have them here. <laughs> we had a full six last time. Nope. All right, so that is a, what have we got, Katie? A two, that is a dice for me. A two, a dice for you. A two, a dice for me. <laughs> One. A dice for me. Oh, no. A three. A dice for a you. A dice for me. <laughs> wow. Is it going to be the exact opposite of last week? Let's find out. A two. No, a dice for me. Wow. Do we have to do Ophelia's? No, uh, no it's, it's only when people are here. Fate really swings, so, doesn't it? It's really now does. five and Fate's zero. A swinger. Fate is against us. Um, and as a reminder, like you know, you guys, we have different uses of these. Some, most of the time, they're used to bolster things like ability checks. Yes. I can use them to bolster ability checks and damage rolls and things like that as well. Can also spend them to create complications or add things into scenes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I imagine that that cool. might get. Cool. Sure. Wish we today. could spend some. <laughs> <laughs> or wish you could. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll spend some and then you can have some. Oh, hopefully. Um, well, actually, kind of. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Um, so my question is: is we currently have you all? I believe Xanthius and Rowan, you'd gone out, you'd got this disc, you'd come back in to show the others. Basically, but you got coffee and cakes. Um, I believe that's right. You did because you inquired at how long ago everything had happened. Yes, when the Everlight was broken. Yes, <laughs> we just keep going. And you had, back dis to you this had one discovered place. that it had been broken Prior. before. The lamplighters had come along, repaired it. Yeah, that's around the time that. Of you know, that repair is when uh, Cavon had gone, you know, left the inn, and then shortly after that was when uh, the spiriting, the haunting began. Mm. Um, and then so it Rowan's was working the theory time. is the the repair is when they put the tampered device in. Yep. that made Cavon all naughty and negative, Possessed. and yeah. um, got bad and stabby stab stab his wife. And sad, skedaddled yeah. out of there. Um, the um, presence of the ghost is still. They're is, still. They are around, still right? present in the inn. You have basically calmed Tyria's spirit for oh, some yeah. time. For now, yes, it was, and even the spirit herself made it clear that you know she grows unstable like the longer this is like a you know being four years as this undead spirit racked by pain racked by the torment of what she went through it, it is probably likely that she will relapse into that unstable right. kind of angry spirit mentality but you have bought some time um 
A couple of other things. Um, we did also make it very clear that uh, you to to fully kind of free her spirit, you will need to you know basically find a way to put her spirit to rest. Mm -hmm. That might be you don't know what's involved with that. Um, but I did uh, say that again. We got work and theories. Work and theories. Um, but if you do manage to do that, that will count as a level up. You will that is a quest, and if you complete it, your reward will be a level up. Okay. Um, and you will also then be able to build and use this building to your heart's content without any worries about this spirit. Like you will be free to to do as you wish. Okay. Um. um yeah. Yeah, I mean, working theory for that is get Kavon back, find where he is, because I guess if he was being manipulated by the lanterns or the lights, how do we approach that? <laughs> like, That's a I mean, great question. Yeah, but was it you? <laughs> like, what happens seen, afterwards? We've seen kind of what that looks like with... Um, the halfling. The halfling lamplighter. Tea. Yeah. Well, we've seen a version of it, yeah. um, you know, with the um, demon manifesting mm. um, and taking control. Um, obviously, I'm probably not exactly the same because I feel like if that was the case, everyone would be talking about, like, Whoa. the big demon following him around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you also, I think you did also discover that the the light that Teresa, that you had gone to repair with Teresa, that caused your kind of initial mm. awareness of all this, um, I think when you took it to see Blackwing, Blackwing reported that it it was broken or somehow non yeah. like something had gone wrong with it like it wasn't meant to do what it did um, that was a it, new it, version it, or no it was meant to do what it did but it did it in the wrong way kind mm. of thing it was a malfunction i mean it could have been a shapeshifter like it could have been like some kind of doppelganger shapeshifter that took the place of cavon and or something like that could you know easily be. um so i feel like we have several things uh in play we could find out where what actually happened to kevon because yeah. we don't yeah, know that don't he know actually went to kale scars no that's just what people say yeah let's um let's break it down a minute and let's actually have this conversation in character as well because like obviously this is well like i think we would be conversation. delicate or at least Santius would be attempting to be delicate if the ghost is still lingering within the place i don't want to say oh we need to go find kavon and kavon might have been manipulated by the lanterns and that's why he murdered this person like it would right, be okay. like uh not quite sure. what i want the oh, ghost okay. to hear so yeah. if anything i would leave the tavern to sure, have sure, a chat sure. like this but sure. um but yeah we could have a little garden tea party is the garden safe yeah the last time yeah. we were in the garden it attacked you it's and safe. led you out uh, because someone walked through the garden to ophelia and they were fine they weren't hit by the vines. Ophelia, in the morning, Ophelia went out to the sort of like little oh, shed building, oh, it was the outbuilding. That went there. Yeah, and she wasn't attacked by anything. She Again. slept there. Yeah. It was um, Scarred Lady that was doing all that. Certainly Maybe. her presence, yeah. Or something well, that's what I mean. Connected to it. What's the range of the Scarred Lady? She's able to break the lantern outside as well. Um, it's true. Where's actually said, let's go back to the coffee shop is what I'm saying. The yeah. only business in the nearby area that is okay. We could find another establishment. Yeah. Let's, let's, yeah, I mean like you, if you wanted like the area. Um, if you wanted like an actual let's full, talk. Yeah. full meal, you could head back to the Grumpy Hog, which is in the center of the, the main well, plaza and things like that. Gruff was prepping all that fish that you caught last time. That's true. And so probably would be grilling it and cooking it up as well. Like um Yeah. Where are you if grilling? Like gave us, so we had some to, money on food. We had a long rest yesterday. Well, you guys had a long rest. We didn't Fresh. recover yeah, any. I, I feel like that's something we should look at kind of. We'll get to that well. in a bit. Well, I feel like that's kind of important. <laughs> yeah, because we were we were hit soon. by some kind of haunting that lowered our wisdom and con by and one. It's not gone back. And it hasn't come back, and we didn't recover HP in the long rest. Um, nope. But. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, and the way to think of that is that you both remember these terrifying nightmares that you had during the night. It's why yeah. you couldn't sleep. You didn't feel rested from it. Those nightmares showing you horrific versions of yourselves, playing on your fears. Um, but even now, when you wake up, like in the sort of broken, abandoned inn that you currently are in, um, the shadows in the corner you like glance at them and they almost seem to like twist and like almost seem to have that droning kind of call to you. There's You're like Percival. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's you definitely find that your minds He's are still there. unsettled <laughs> this morning. Uh, then Rowan would en encourage the group to maybe leave the house and then we can discuss our next plans. Maybe get, we maybe we just need to sun. take a walk. Get some fresh air, maybe we'll feel better. Um Xanthius. Yes. Do you feel? Oh, I feel awful, frankly. Foggy, just bleary. Really, really bad. I feel, uh, yeah. I mean, I've 
not felt great in a while, but this is oh, this is up there. I mean, what do you do? You, you feel feeling the same? Do you think it's to do with the ghost? Do you feel? Gruff's not here in this bit. He's in the kitchen cooking. Do you feel? I, as I'm handing cake over. Daisy's already had like two pastries and a cup of coffee, so she's just like, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sick. <laughs> No, 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 no. She's just Bouncing jittery. off the walls. Sugar rush and caffeine. It was a haunting experience to be in that house, and I think it's left a bit of a deep scar for me. Well, that's why I'm thinking, let's get some fresh air, get a walk, get a good meal, uh, just rest, relax, talk You're about right. what we need to do next. I can go for a walk. No. Let's go for a walk. Should we go all the way let's around the town? Should we explore something not we haven't explored before? all the way around before? the town. No, we can... We, we've got all day. <laughs> we can take our time. Just let's find where Gruff is with the fish. When you hear banging, like, there is, like, the smell of cooking fish in the back. The um, the kitchen of the interesting devil inn that you're currently in obviously is no longer functional because it's, like, broken, but there is, like, a, like a fireplace with a chimney that, you know, it looks like the smoke. Yeah, so you've, like, set a little fire yeah. going. You're, like, campfire cooking, yeah. but in this abandoned house, yeah, basically. Pretty much that, yeah. So you're, like, looking at, like, these roasted... Um, uh, grilled. Grilled, sorry, yeah, grilled, uh, like, ruby ruby fish, basically, that were caught yesterday. Someone suggested, surely, that they're called red herrings. <laughs> uh, Herring is a sea fish, I believe. <laughs> um, but uh, it could be a, a red red, red trout, mm. uh, you know, something like that. Um, beautifully scaled, kind of like pink, almost like salmon pink, but it's a different type of fish. Mm. Um, but yeah, kind of roasted on like sticks, like you've got mm. like, this is like fish campfire cooking, yeah, basically. Are you imagining the Tears of the Kingdom cooking music? Dun, I am dun, now. Dun, 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 dun. That's, 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 that's very Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> that's thing. Pokemon. thing, yeah. in it? Healed up <laughs> now. <laughs> we don't need to do it. <laughs> Tom does. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, you guys can find Gruff no yeah. problem. Um, you are not skilled in cooking, are you, Gruff? You don't have proficiency in cooks utensils or anything like that. That's what he does, though. No, you can do. Um, you can. Well, no, you catch fish. Yeah, catch. No, I mean like in 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 role play. In role play, not yes. reflecting yeah, on yeah. a sheet. So that, that means uh, if you if could just, just roll with yeah. intelligence for me, please. I just imagine it's just you know pretty basic. Yeah, it's good for him. I don't give a yeah, crap what you, you kids think. Uh, 18. <laughs> I don't care about my sheet. <laughs> I don't care about stats. I'm really strong. Minus one, 17. 17. Um, <laughs> actually, a surprisingly good, decent-ish meal. Um, the nice. fish is... The, well, no, it is good. Okay. 17, like, um, the fish is cooked to perfection. It's nice and flaky. Perfection. The inside are, are nice and soft. A um, little bit of whatever seasoning you can... Probably not much. You probably have, like, a little bit of salt in, like, a pouch or something like that that you sprinkled on it, um, but enough to count as a, 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 what I would call a kind of hearty meal. Oh. Um, so you guys do get to all have four temporary hit points. Ooh, I think. Oh, thank you. That you start the day with. Any hit points you t had from yesterday, you'd obviously lose, and then you would start today with four And that does still, points. does that, <coughs> any, are we, are we good yet? Use your words. Are we, are we good? No. 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 I've, you've got four temporary hit points. I don't oh. think a good fish meal max. is going to fix this. Maybe not. No, not this. I just mean like the haunting and the. Oh, you know, I don't. I just feel it's not a curse lifting fish, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the it's a curse. Magical grilled it. I, I think fish. we just need to go for a walk and. Got it. Grilled it. it. Off. Just have a glass of water. Just dehydrate it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Could be. Just need some magnesium. Guys, will you drain your water skins, Anthias? Still feel bad. Oh, but... Damn. What is this? It's a cold. <laughs> Have we got a call? <laughs> well, I can tell you that I'm we? not going someone to a doctor. We talk about all these grand adventures. You never talk about someone just like... It, yeah. it, it, I mean, we yeah, you did have Crumble Belly last one. I feel that if you are going to, Althea is the campaign where it's more likely. Arois, you guys are a little bit more superheroes kind of thing. Mm -hmm. In this, like, if you go wading around in, like, filth and, like, with cuts and things on it, I'm going to have yeah. you roll, like, checks to see if you catch diseases and stuff. Cool. Like, you know, absolutely. Um, I'm not going full like gritty Warhammer fantasy kind of you level of just things, dies but old age. could be. <laughs> could be. You get magically aged enough, maybe I will. Um, but yeah, so definitely going to be more things like that. And in fact, yeah, very much you know out of game knowledge. Whatever is afflicting Xanthius and Rowan is definitely not just. Mm. Uh, is it noticeable physically for other people? Not right now. 
I would say that well, they can see that you're tired. They can see that you're a bit worn Bad down. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe if this progresses or if it gets worse, if it does, you don't know. You don't know anything at this point. I'm playing it up. Is it obvious for Xanthius that it's not? You are both aware that something is not right. Okay. Are you being melodramatic about it? Well, uh, yeah, I, it's just like man flu. Like, you know when I... No! Yeah. Oh, I feel so bad. Yeah. This is the worst I've felt ever. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure you said keep in exactly mind that, that like... Last time you were if it was just you didn't get any hit points from long resting, that would be one thing. The, the reduction of your con and wisdom, like, you would notice that, and that reflects both a, a, a kind of detriment to your physical health, your con, but wisdom is also your mental health. This is like, mm -hmm. like I said, like, shadows are kind of, like, out the corner of your eye. Did something just move in that shadow? You've, you've kind of got that stuff going this on, This has right? put my perception down to seven. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> not perception, my wisdom, sorry. <laughs> what did I say? Anyway, um, so I'm feeling real bad. Yeah. <clears throat> So I would say that you are both aware that, like, something about that encounter is definitely stuck with you. You can interpret that however you like as characters. That's your choice as, as role players. Um, but yeah, the right. the sun is, is... You can hear the bustling sounds of Ash and Rest begin to kind of make its way. You finish eating your lovely uh, grilled fish sticks. Um, and yeah, it probably Wonderful is about... Wonderful breakfast. This is perfectly cooked. I've always said you've got to start a day with a good breakfast. None of this sugary stuff that you guys seem to I don't know what you're talking about! This my... <laughs> Case in point. We just needed a good kickstart, I thought. I thought, I, it help. I thought the sugar might help, but I still feel it doesn't, it just, you know, when we're <laughs> right through me. You're both looking a bit pale. Uh, Sleep well? Not, no, no, frankly, no. Awful I don't sleep. know if it's the tavern or, or, or... Did you have nightmares? I had nightmares. I, did, yes. oh, I dreamt of home. Come here, Xanthius, let me feel your forehead. Okay, go ahead. I mean, it might feel warm anyway. Ooh. Warmer than normal. I would say it feels colder than your usual. Oh, oh it's not human level, is it? Wait, feeling a bit clammy. Clammy? Oh, that won't do. That simply won't do. It's sticky. Sticky? Mm. Well, I'm, I'm going to go wash my face then. Um, <laughs> um, it's about 9 a.m. Um, for your reference. Um, generally in uh, Ash and Rest, people don't tend to have, like only very wealthy people would have like private bathrooms or inns would have like private bathrooms. Most okay. people will go and use the House of the Rose um, and use the baths there as like their sort of day-to-day -day bathing and sort of getting themselves clean and stuff like that. Um, Rome, what about your forehead? Let me reach. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing, probably would feel a little cold to the touch. Like chilled. You don't have a control, though. You didn't feel my forehead in the past. This is the first no, time you've true. ever done uh, that. I, I almost put my back out, oh, reaching me out that it. high. It's the same temperature as my hand. Oh, OK, great. So well, I that's know. useless to us, actually. Yes. Um, Science is out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, if we want to just explore the city, we need to talk about what we need to do next anyway, um, I what suppose. What are our priorities? Um, I think it would be a good idea to find and he has a quick look around at the walls. Find the other person in this, involved in this. Yes, uh, shall we? Uh, let's, let's go take a walk and yes. we can walk, walk and talk. Maybe. Um, um, Ophelia, who is present, is just gonna say, I think I will remain here because if anybody, just in case anyone comes along, we don't want them upsetting Tyria. So I will, I will keep things secured here for today. Now, Ophelia. Yes, Rowan. That little building <coughs> yes. next to the enticing devil. Yes. Are you going to spend most of your time there? Well, I think once you all leave, I will probably come and spend time in here. Perhaps Percival and I can begin clearing things up. Well, Percival can clear things Are away. you making a little ritual shrine? Well, that I think is something we need to discuss at a later date, but certainly it would be a perfect space for me to set up <laughs> for my own uses, but we can discuss that later. Oh, I'm on to Rhiannon. Rhiannon. I'm not making decisions yeah, yeah, yeah. for Rhiannon, but... No, yeah. Well, um, if anything happens here, then do send for us. We'll come back as soon as we... Of course. As, as soon as you need us. Yes, of course. But no, um, I think, I think at least for, certainly for today, Tyria seemed... I mean, Daisy and I spoke with her, and it seemed that she is more at peace, at least for the time being. I think that she will be fine for at least a day, but... Well, if anyone's going to keep an eye on her, best... I think it you. best it be me, yes. OK. And honestly, Percival is kind of unnerving me at the moment. I heard him shuffling through the hallways through the night. Just the I shadows. Done. I guess he would have stayed with Ophelia, right? 
Sometimes, well, he doesn't need to sleep, so he might have been clearing up while Ophelia was sleeping. Yeah, he opened my door very, very slowly last night. He's a constant jump scare for Rowan right now. <laughs> 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 okay, well, let's uh, let's head out and talk about what we oh, need to do if next. If you could, whilst you're out, yes. f- uh, if you could acquire some tools, um, things like a hammer, nails, I can always have Percival start to repair some of those. <laughs> I thought you were going to do it. <laughs> <Close. laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Um, yes, picking, picking if, up if some that's tools. what he needs. Well, just anything, like, uh, right now, there's not much we can do with things here, but uh, okay. if, if we got some tools, he might be able to do some things whilst we're... Maybe we can go up. talk to the guilds. <laughs> can you imagine? Yes. No one gets that one. I... So, <laughs> um, that's my way of making yep. sure that I don't have to worry about Ophelia for the rest of, this, uh, of today. Um, but yeah, yeah you we'll guys are free to head out. Where are you heading? Like, are you just wandering? Are we you... are. Let's just head. I'd like to find north. another place in this vicinity that's a nice sit down place. Um... Just an alternative to a latte fun. I was going to suggest we actually go back to the baths. Yeah. Baths. We could go back to the baths. You boy always look like you could do with a treat. A treat? Do we have... A little bit of relaxing. No, Do we have the money for a treat right now? We're a little bit tight on funds. It's not very That's true. It's not not too much. You're Um, looking miserable as sin, so let's... does sound... Thank you. Let's go there and take take some... (sighs) Take stock of what we have. Have a bath. Exfoliate. They can braid your hair. Oh, yes. It did look great. You look very pretty again. Yeah. It has been three days. I am due for a haircut. The things I do for you. <laughs> All right. Your um, reference image with you. Got my reference. Yeah. <laughs> it's about 9 a.m. You begin making your way, uh, heading into the Heart's Way, which is kind of the core of, of Ash and Rest. It's where most of the shops, most of the shrines and things like that are located. Um, you make your way out to the Great Plaza, um, and you can see that there is... Um, it's probably a little bit late. The queues are just dying off at the baths. Like, most people would have come a bit earlier to have their, like, morning routine. There's still a few people. It's still quite busy. Um, but you make your way inside, um, and you see the familiar uh, features of the two uh, rabbit wild hearts, uh, Reverend Mother Orella and Reverend Father Dandily, um, as they are conducting services. Um, Orella is actually doing um, like a, a courtier's makeup, like she's helping apply a bunch of makeup to a, a dwarven lady who looks like she's maybe going about important business today. Um, but she gently waves and kind of gestures you in. Um, Dandily uh, approaches you and he's like, oh, hello, welcome again. Hello. Um, are you looking to use the baths this morning? Oh, we would love yes. the bath, actually, yes. Please. A nice, relaxing yes, of course. bath. Uh, we do, I mean, you've helped us before, so we're more than happy to let you use the baths. Um, if you'd like any other services, we might ask you for a donation today, but the baths you're more than welcome to use. Um, Thank you, Father. Yes, of course. Uh, Help yourself down. Um, He does kind of look a little bit curiously at Rowan and Xanthius. Um, But he just doesn't, he just, he's just like, oh, you would, if I do say, you look a bit run down, gentlemen. Have you been sleeping well? Sleep's very important. I had nightmares. You might be aware. After we last saw you, we did in fact go visit the Duke, and he uh, granted us generously uh, the enticing devil tavern, um, and the eyes kind of go wide. Oh, my goodness, that cursed place. Oh, uh, yes, well, we... We're dealing with that curse. Stayed the night there. Oh, and I've heard awful things. I've heard that there is a spirit, and it's, well, it's supposedly the people that were there before were it's sort of true. devil worshippers and things like it's that. It's all true. Well, well not maybe not all of it. The, ha- the haunting, certainly. We had to my goodness. deal with that ourselves, and since then we've not been feeling ourselves. Really? You've not, what do you mean? Just sort of feeling unwell, unnerved? Oh, just... oh. <laughs> Sorry, I thought a shadow was a face. Oh dear. Just off, in all ways off, frankly. Like the shadows are coming out to get us. Uh, and he looks towards you and gruff Daisy. He's like, uh, you two, have you felt the same way since this encounter? Or? I'm, I'm fine. fine. I'm in fine fettle. I've had way too much These two, though, I'm these fine. boyos, they had a bit more contact with the ghost lady than we did. Mm. You see him grow concerned. Dandelion's normally quite a sort of very jolly and sort of um, happy-go-lucky, quite frivolous uh, individual. He kind of grows a little bit concerned. He's like, well, I, I'm not quite the... Um, I'm not as connected with uh, divine magic as my sister is, but I've studied and I know a few things. And, um, you know, encounters with... Uh, creatures such as 
undead or the planes or vault spawn, they have a nasty way of leaving lingering mal malignant auras, um, things that can um, be quite dangerous. Um, if you'd like, I could. Uh, would you like? I, I could examine you to see if there is anything. Yeah, what would that you. involve? Um, just some simple spell casting and some rituals. It will take a, a little bit of time, but. Um, yes, I'd happily make a donation for that. No, no, so. for, for just for the checking. There's no need for that. We were, you know, part of being uh, a priest of Saint Typhine is we care very much like the the Church of the Silence. We care about your souls and we care about your spiritual well-being as well as your physical. You know, especially here in the House of the Rose, we care for one's appearance. Such also. a noble cause. <laughs> oh, that's Are very you... sweet of you. Very sweet of you. Rowan. If you if you think it necessary, then I I can't see why not. Uh, yes. Well, come with me then. Um, uh, let us before you go into the baths. Uh, let me take you to one of the uh, one of our sort of chambers where we perform. Um, sort of rituals and things like that. And, Can I ask what kind of spell casting we're talking about here? Well, it will be to detect if there are any um, powerful auras of magic or sources of magic within you or uh, around you, um, uh, anything that is lingering or connected to your soul. Um, you know what, I believe whatever Rowan has... That is sounds good for both of us. Certainly what I will have. I, I think I, I I just require a bath for now, but if you identify anything with Rowan, then please let me know. Of course, yes. Hopefully course. the bath will be just enough for me. All right, well, I can only do one at a time anyway, so perhaps go and enjoy your bath Thank uh, with you. the others. Um, and Rowan, if you come with me, uh, right. we can investigate. Sure. Um, and you are left <laughs> alone. Uh, yeah, you guys... How did you get... How do you keep going away with this? Made a very reasonable... Like, there's no reason for anyone to think that he's got anything more suspicious going on, I mean, right? Like, Groff is gruff staring at you. Sure, like, that's oh, a gruff problem. Like, having seen the hand, and all that, Gruff is like... All right. Well, in fact, I'll leave that as Gruff, Daisy, and Xanthius <laughs> make your way down into the, the public baths. This time, because the last time you guys were here, you kind of had them to yourself. In this case, there are there. it's kind of like going to like a public spa. Like, there are people always around you, right? You, they're mostly keeping to themselves. Um, if you've ever been to... A, Obviously, none of you guys, well, Kim might have been to one, like an onsen in Japan, it's very public. So you just go in, people are just chilling. Um, people are very, some people are naked, some people aren't, some people have like coverings over them, but it's very public. Like it's not like a little private, you can have a quiet conversation in, right? Um, hey. Prof is naked. Sure. Again. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. But what I'm saying is that if you wanted to talk to Xanthius, keep in mind that the, you're not really able to have a private conversation in the baths. Is also, have you noticed that when you're in water, you can just speak to someone on like the other side of the pool? Mm. It like carries over the water. So, so you can really hear people. Really? Hear what people. are you talking about? Ooh, have you not done that? <laughs> what? If you stand on the water, when you speak yeah, underwater, it makes a bubble of audio. No, no, no. no, <laughs> just no, no like in... it carries the sound. Yeah. Really? Because awesome. yeah. Yeah. it's, remember, it's sound is vibrations, surfaces. right? How so... we used to talk to France. <laughs> just it is, though, you know, before we got talented. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just making the point that if the conversation happens, it would... You, it's I, I mean, I've one. also consistently been saying, like, we'll just take a walk and I'll feel better. Oh. I just need a glass of water, I'll feel better. You I'm need to a, convince them, not I'm me. a denier of science. Oh, you don't need to convince Daisy, you need to convince Ruff. <laughs> yeah. like, Daisy's fine. Whilst you guys go down, <laughs> Rowan, uh, Dandily leads you into... Honestly, it would feel a bit like, you know, one of those massage rooms in a spa where it's got, like, low lighting and there's, like, soft awesome. music and it's got, like, oh, incense and things. This is and there is a, um, like, a bed. It's like a stone kind of plinth, but it's got, like, a big cushioned top to it. Mm. Um, and he says, if you just lie down um, and I need to prepare <laughs> some... <laughs> <laughs> just instantly falls <laughs> Oh, okay. Can you make a wisdom saving throw for me? Sure. Wait, can, yeah, can you fall asleep? 14 minus... Oh, God, minus one. Minus I one, I think. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. Um, it is... You lay your head down, and yeah, like, being so tired, you immediately try and fall asleep. And then, within minutes, you... You know in a dream, you don't really remember you're in a dream. You are back in that inn, and the darkness is closing in on you but you're so big and now the walls are pressing up against you and crushing you and you can feel your bones beginning to crack like stone foundations and the roof is cramping your neck and you're being compressed by the in itself, almost feeling like somebody is crushing the life out of you and you can't breathe and then, <gasps> and then you wake up in a sudden oh, burst. Die. Are you all right? I'm, uh, I must have drifted off, I'm sorry. 
You did, but it was only for a moment. And uh, are you all right? You're like you're sweating. You're like dripped <laughs> in sweat. Um, I was. I dreamt I was being crushed. Like the walls are coming in on me. When when you say the walls are coming in on you, you almost look, and the ceiling of this room almost looks like it's dropping. Are the foundations secure? Yes, of course they are. And then you look again, and it's fine. But it almost looked like the ceiling was coming down on you, and then it's Could reset. Have sworn. Let me. Pref- I think you. I think we need something. Something is clearly wrong here. Sometimes, um, when we encounter these sort of powerful uh, magics, they can leave a lingering thing. But let's let's do this. And he begins performing a ritual. He begins lighting several candles. Um, he begins chanting, um, reaching out to Saint Typhine, um, speaking about love and speaking about um, embracing um, who you are and these kind of messages in their prayers and things like that. Um, and there is this incense that fills the room, a very soft kind of almost rose petal incense that fills the air. Um, and the music is soft, um, kind of playing in the air, almost illusory music. And that almost brings you a sense of calmness, Rowan, especially for yeah, you. Yeah, focus on music. the music for sure. Yeah, and that music definitely like eases you. You don't fall asleep, but you feel your body relax for a moment. Um, and then you see Dandily, his ears kind of flop down um, and he closes his eyes. He holds a hand over your chest and you watch as almost rose petals almost like begin to appear from his hand and fall over you um, as he begins to almost like play, hover his hand over your body from foot to, foot to head. Um, and as the rose petals fall, they disappear and they turn into light um, as he almost begins casting this. And he's ritually casting, effectively, detect magic at this point. Um, a sort of version of detect magic. Too cool, a bit. <laughs> oh, I apologise. Uh, it won't last too long. Um, <laughs> after about <laughs> ten minutes, <laughs> um, he <laughs> opens his eyes and you see that there are, like, little tears, like, in the corners of his eyes. He's like... I'm very sorry, Um, there is something. Whatever you encountered, a great sadness and a great fear, whatever this spirit that you encountered, it has sort of left a shroud over you. And you are, there is a curse upon you. A curse? A curse, yes. I do not believe it um, intentional. It is almost by mere contact with this creature, part of its suffering, part of its fear has stuck to you. Mm. Um, This sort of curse, you will, I believe you will struggle to find peace in sleep and it may eat away at your mind. It will play tricks on you and... That's already happening. Then it is worrying. If If this curse is not removed, there is a great chance that you will perish. If your mind is damaged by this curse, it will break and that you will not be anymore. You will likely become another spirit, a shade to haunt as well. Now, my sister, we can remove curses, but it requires um, expensive components. You did a great service to us before. I think that we can reduce that cost, but we would still require... I I wouldn't want to put you out. No, 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 you helped us. We we owe you for the service you provided to us before, but we do require... It is a a certain type of um, blessed mineral. Uh, The mineral is normally acquired in in mines and things like that. Traders often carry it. Um, We can send for it. but it does cost some some money. You will need to acquire it. Um, it is a, a silver powder, and then it is it is refined through a blessing process. Refined um, silver. Yes, refined silver powder. Um, we will supply some of it. Normally, this spell costs three hundred gold pieces to to cast, um, but we can provide at least two hundred. Um, but that will only that would only work for one of you. It would re- need to be cast <laughs> twice. Jeez. Does your path need a, an entertainer? <laughs> we do, but I feel that you would probably not be able to make enough coin in the time. This will happen every night, Rowan. The, the longer every night you try and sleep, your mind can, will potentially degrade further and further. Your body too. Um, and you will find no rest. You will not... You will find no rest in sleep whilst this curse is upon you. <sighs> Poor Xanthius. 
It's a curse of harrowing. 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 Curse of harrowing. It is, it is one that we are taught of. I've never encountered it. I've never encountered, not my sister either, have never seen this magic in effect, but we have learned of it. It is taught to us. Um, it is found in especially beings of uh, connected to death um, and fear, demons, undead, that sort of creature. I'm boned, dude. I'm done for. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your help. No, please, uh, come. If you can acquire a hundred gold of this uh, refined silver powder, we can, we can perform at least it once. Um, other, the House of the Rose, we do not have a lot of wealth. We tend to give back everything we make or it goes into the running of the baths. Um, other shrines here in Ashen Rest and the, the Church of the Scions, they are likely to have more of this material. They might be able to even cast a spell without this ingredient. Some, some spellcasters are powerful enough to do it with different ingredients or, or different uh, abilities, but we would require it. Um, they may be able to help you. They may have more of this resource, but unfortunately we just don't. We just do not make enough money. Could to you be able point to... me in the right direction? Uh, of where of to buy an it? an alternative. Or... Oh, well, uh, in all of the town, you have the, the shrines of all the different saints, the shrine of the heron, right. uh, the house of the heron, the house of um, making, um, the bright shadow cathedral, um, anyone, who, but there are also sometimes magicians, mages, who are able to remove curses as well. It is not simply the work of the gods. Sometimes those who are just very skilled in magic also have this ability. Um, but I'm afraid I could not, I could not point you to them to you directly. Like I said, I am not even much of a spellcaster myself. My sister is, but not, but not I. Um, All right. I'm more of a scholar, really. Um, well, you helped me today. Of course, it is. It is awful to see you suffering and to to know that you are experiencing this. It's not all bad. Could be worse. He like looks at you kind of a bit sternly, as like you put on a brave face of things, but fear is the mind killer. <laughs> Fear is something, fear is an ugliness that we always face. And you can put on the brightest smile, but it will not always hide the pains. Um, that is true. Come, enjoy a, a warm, a, find comfort in small things now. Have a warm bath, um, get, let's get you rested as best we can. I need um, to find a good pebble. If that helps you, then so be it. Come, uh, and he'll kind of help lead you out of the room and take you down to the baths to meet with the others. Um, but yeah. So was that? A hundred gold, they can supply two hundred gold. It's three hundred gold total. <clears throat> oh, okay. It's, that's per casting of the spell. Right, okay. Uh, yeah. It is, and I know some people are going to be like, remove curse doesn't have a material component. In this world it does. Does now. Does now. Um, um, yeah, okay. it's three hundred gold basically to cast remove curse in this world. And two times refined silver power. How do, or is uh, it, it, it requires three hundred gold's worth of refined silver oh, power. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. But like I said, other like you might find like powerful divine spellcasters may just be able to cast it innately, and they don't might not need to use that material. But they might ask for a favor, or they might want you to do something, or make a promise, or anything like that. Um, but yeah, this is going to cost three hundred gold each, or unless it's at the baths. Unless you get it, and then it will only you'll be a hundred each. No, that would only be for, for one, one casting. So it'll be so four hundred. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Oof. We yeah. do not have much money. No. We do not. Well, how much do we actually not have combined? combined. <laughs> I've got like 60 on me. Like, I think. Um, okay. You know what we should do? Rock, paper, scissors, and then that'll Take cheapen one. the deal because one of us dies. Yeah, yeah. And then we'd have to pay for one. I think rock, paper, scissors to the death is a good way of doing that. Then it's only 100 gold. Yeah. To be honest, though, Xanthius has other problems as well. Yeah. So I think just let Xanthius die yeah. and then roll Bye. Right, yeah. <laughs> I. You're gonna blow up. That would would be a bad idea. <laughs> well, I'm anyway. Um, if you would like some suggestions, like things like how can we raise, you know, a lot of money in that time, you can always ask and like find out stuff. It's right. We got some. We got some jobs and quests. Dolls to kill. Did you yeah. want to? You can certainly try for things like that. There are, you know, there is also. Um, they might be able to find more jobs here in town that pay more money. I mean, you we might, had one job. You could also cover that cost. Potentially go and borrow gold, like from certain people. Like take a loan. Take a loan. Take a loan. Also, um, we, need we don't actually, have a mortgage. The getting gold <laughs> one thing. We also need to actually get refined silver powder as well with it. Well, that was to order it right, and then we they to could order it, I guess. It. Yeah, right. You you would need to acquire it if you want to get it cast at the baths. 
Yeah. Um, the Everdells, the, the Reverend Mother and Father, need you to supply them 100 gold of refined silver powder. They actually don't have enough, yeah. so you would need to go and buy it and bring it to them. Other places, like there are, they, this, the Baths is not the only kind of shrine or temple. There are other shrines and temples in Ash and Rest. They may have this silver powder that you can either buy it from them, right. or they may be able to cast the spell for you. Um, so We can shop around. I think we need a second opinion, to be honest. I don't believe it. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, Xanthius. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm assuming Rome would tell, you know, as you get down and you have this discussion. With Open team, book. Like, yeah, I figured, like, so that we've all got the same information, right? Um, if, in fact, actually, Daisy as well. Hello. Daisy is a rogue, but we, you're not, like, a, a rogue with strong criminal contacts, are you? You're no. not, like, a, yeah, okay. Just wily. Um, in that case, don't worry about it. No, she's yeah. not. Yeah, don't she's, worry about it. She's why just... you <laughs> you know of at least one organization that lends money out. I am not working with them. Just saying. Is it daddies? No. Just saying. Maybe. You you that organization is very prim prevalent around the empire, and <laughs> that is like one of their main things that they do is they they loan money to people. Are they active here? Maybe. Nah, not right. bringing that up. Okay. Can we go to the, <laughs> the church? See if they... Bright Shadow Cathedral, that was going to be Gruff's suggestion, I. So you say Curse of Harrowing? Har har harrowing, was it? Harrowing. Harrowing. Yes. Okay, good, good, great. Just another one. And if it keeps going on, we're going to perish. You're not going to perish. We'll sort it before it gets dangerous. I think we should go to the cathedral and speak to the... What are we going to do if Santius dies? What are we going to do if Rowan dies? Neither of you are going to die. Okay. We I haven't picked our rooms for the enticing devil yet. I won't allow it, okay? Good. That's the last I want to hear of this, okay? I'm very meek. Because if you give up <laughs> so now, firm. there's no point, is there? I'm not giving up. Exactly. Not for him. Exactly. We've got Rowan looking after her. Not Rowan, you're, you're Gruff. I'm Gruff. We've got Gruff. I'm sorry, I my mind... Tatters. It's been a long night. It's, it's okay. Been a long night. We've got is you there looking after us. Anything that would help? Um, feel better. This bath is helping. I mean, uh, kind of. Rowan is go naked. See the toad. The I want to see the toad. I'm worried about the prophecies. We, we don't have a lot of time. If this makes them worse every time they go to sleep, we really need to not waste time on a toy. He'll keep his spirits up. It's not a waste of time. Rowan's <laughs> bottom lip is quivering. <laughs> Don't you think it's a toy? <laughs> it's okay if you have those feelings towards the clever toy. Uh, whatever I don't you suggest, judge. Whatever you suggest, Graf, is, is I, I, I'll follow you willingly. So you think we we'll go, go to, to the, the cathedral. cathedral? That's the next stop. We'll have a bath, then we'll go to the cathedral. Okay. In Gruff's head, he was just imagining pushing everyone under the water and holding them there for a little bit. Wow. Really? Really intrusive thought. Oh, wow. Like, just super intrusive. Some backstory coming just out. For some <laughs> just for some quiet. What did you say to Xanthius? I've seen the face of a man who's drowning. man who's drowning. Yeah? Yeah, you never questioned that, did you? No, I did not. Never questioned that. <laughs> As you guys <laughs> are... Um, he's killed a man. Well, we're in the bar. Yes. <laughs> when uh, Rowan was getting um, seen to and stuff like that. Sure. Is there lighting in the baths? Yeah. yeah. It's very soft, gentle lighting. Is it similar to, like, the Lamplighters Guild style of lighting? It is, because we've fixed the thing in here before. Mm -hmm. that, what, what uh, light any magical lights well. look like they are probably, that you estimate, you, you can guess that they're probably provided by the Lamplighters mm -hmm. Guild. Huh. So, like, other people can create magical lights, but they seem to have the ability to make them permanent. Mm -hmm. And you can see. They're not exactly the same as the ones outside, but there are lights yeah. in here that are like quite artificial lights. Like they've mm -hmm. been built with a metal casing and they have a, got like a magical light inside them. And there are some here in these baths, yeah. So this was actually why Gruff wanted to come to the baths. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you would also notice that right as you came into the baths, right outside the entrance to the baths is one of the lamp yeah, lighters the lights. Yeah, yeah, the standard ones as well. I'll probably catch you like looking around. Oh, you don't think? Oh, I, I do think. Well, okay. Well, this is where we first started having trouble, right? And it was 
strange. Well, I thought it might have been just the lamps outside that potentially caused it, but if they're here as well... Look at them. Inside every building, too? Well, you're the magical one. Can you feel an aura, or...? No. <laughs> no, nothing... I, well, I mean, I... <laughs> You just looked at me and then decided no. <laughs> well, I was, I presume, do I feel an aura? Are you checking? I, like, I mean, you, like, <clears throat> there is no ability to just, you would mm. have to cast a tech magic. Right, like, yeah. you, you have to cast a spell if you but want to. But passively, like like, it, passively, like, there's no, there's no, like, yeah. arcana check to know if there's magic in the air, right? That is what the detect magic spell is for. You can go up to the lights and physically open them oh, to I'm see if it has that, that yeah. disc in. No. You could do that, but there I'm is no just, it. like, Natural You're magic. Do it. There's people. Is there like there's not. There's people guards in here. Yeah. Whatever. There's not there's guards, not but there's people. Across. There are definitely like because you guys have been having these conversations and like I said, people are like hearing like snippets of stuff and so they are kind of like occasionally, but they're also having their own conversations, yeah. right? You um, said anything about lamp lighters? No. So you've just said, are you thinking? And then you were looking mm. at. Yeah. You think what I'm thinking? Um, you, uh, you, Daisy, you would probably and Gruff actually because you guys have got fairly decent passive perceptions. Um, you do hear that other people are like. You know, in their kind of hushed conversations, you hear people kind of saying, it's like, oh, did you hear about the lamb lights? Oh, I can't believe it. Guards hauled them away this morning. There's, like, conversations that are going on, like people are yeah. talking about yeah. something. Um, some I'm going to wander over to a light. Okay. Gruff, please. You have to, like, climb out of the bath. It's, like, set onto the side. But you're just, like, stood on, like, the tiled, sort of, like, outer part of the bath. So um, do, a big, big do a big shake. shake. <laughs> puff up. Like a big puff ball. Yep. Um, yeah, you can go up to one of these lights. Like, it's it's encased in, like, a metal framework. Um, you can see that it's kind of been sealed shut. There is, like, a magical light behind the glass. Um, it's very similar in design to the, the lamp and lan lanterns outside, but... Can I open it, or is it you can, yeah. in the... No, you can definitely try. Um, you know what to look for, like, if you're trying to find one of these devices, but you've not done it before, so this would be an Arcana check straight up, just a straight Arcana oh, Rowan, check. Rowan and Xanthius have done it before, haven't they? Mm -hmm. we, yeah, yeah, Xanthius has done it before. Rowan hasn't, before. but Xanthius has done it. I have terrible it. Arcana, but let's... Oh, no, but that, hey, look, that's, that's what rolls are for. <laughs> I'm just watching a naked lion. Fifteen. Fifteen. Rip open a lamp. You succeed, but I'm going to spend two of these oh, no. uh, to have it so that somebody notices what you're two. doing. Two? Oh, yeah. okay. Um, that's because also I want to give you guys some... some Yay! Yay! I figured that if I have to, like, Pick anything... If I want to make an adjustment to a scene, I have to spend two, right? Like, if right. I want to add a complication I to think it. two's a good, a good cost for that. Yeah, have someone spotting it is pretty, like, yeah. bad. Like, having, like... So this is, like, a complication, right? So you get what you want, which is you go up... You kind of have to like pull it off and you kind of pull this light apart, but it's very obvious what you're doing. You're like, Shh, oh, he's not. At. He's not trying to hide it, it. exactly. Um, but you pull it off and you would find a smaller version uh. of a similar looking uh, disc device. Um, a very a smaller version has been put in here. Um, you see a couple of people and like there's this one, um, maybe kind of a bit more of a burly looking man. He looks like a, maybe a bit of a m wealthy merchant. He's like, oh, I say that, sir, what are you doing? You're breaking the lights. No, I'm examining them. I'm going to put it back in a minute. Well, I don't think, I don't think the Reverend Mother and Reverend Father would appreciate that. You, you shouldn't be messing with something like that. Are you a member of the Lamplighters Guild? No, but I've worked for them. Well, but are you, are, are you an engineer? I've witnessed some engineering. You're, you're avoiding my question, sir. I think, no, and he, he's kind of raising his voice. No, I don't think you should put that down immediately. Um, well, I was going to put it back. Do you want me to put it back or do you want me to put it down? Put it back. You should put it back. Okay, I am. That's what I was going to do anyway. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm glad. would faster if you hadn't interrupted. Well, <laughs> you didn't know what you were doing, did I? You look like you're up to trouble. Are you fit? What are you doing? What's that thing in your hand? I'm examining the light. What for? The last time I came here, this place was full of cursed monsters, and I wanted to check that they hadn't damaged the light because it wasn't looking as bright as the others. Give me a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> it's half true. It's half true. It's not fully true. Fake dice. Yeah, you can yeah, spend one, it, absolutely. Yeah. What was your deception? Ooh. 18 plus six plus one. <laughs> so, 25. <laughs> nice. It's oh. like, oh. All right then. Jolly <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Fine. Excellent work. Thank you. 
What was that about lamplighters that I heard? Did you say um, that guards were involved? That's terrible. Uh, he didn't say that, but somebody else will look over to you. Um, a uh, a human woman will look over to you. Um, she's like older. She's maybe in sort of like her late fifties. She's got like her half her graying sort of hair tied up in a in a bunch. She's got like a little wrap around her head, and she's just like, oh no, that was me, dear. Did you? I don't know if. Oh, I don't know if you're. I don't think you're residents here, but um, yes, there was um, it was a bit of a kerfuffle this morning. Apparently, uh, I saw did, I saw the high marshal and that um, and that young authorita, uh, the orc Zaren Tekis. They went to the Lamplighters Guild, and uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a you know perhaps a few moments later, they came out with a number of them, uh, sort of really? cuffed, and they took them off to the forge. Do you um, know any of the people that were? Taken? No, I don't know them in particular, but they were all members of the guild. Some something has surely happened. How curious! I yes. wonder what's going on over there. Yes, yes, it's quite of course quite a commotion. Yes, um, and they sort of like a, and you know she's kind of just like yes, I, probably some um, investigation. I heard that there was. Did you hear a few days ago there was a murder up by uh, the the house of making uh, the the shrine to Saint Masara. Some some thieves broke in and they killed one of the priestesses and then they fled the city. I imagine and this Zaron Tekis was involved in all of that. Um, Sorry, did well. The House of Making? That wasn't us! Hang on. It wasn't me! (laughs) House of Making, that's not where we were like installing the lights, was it? I'm not asking that. No, no, we weren't. We haven't been. That's a shrine, right? Yeah, Yeah, this is the House of the Making, the shrine to St. Misara. Am I back at this point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can say that you come back in just as Gruff finishes putting the light back the way it was. Um, you You see the sort of merchant sort of like. Like you know, waxes his moustache and it just goes back to his conversation, um, and is uh, very, very much put aside. But he will remember your face and that you were doing something to the lights. Oh, well, I am a big naked lion. Yeah, man. It's, it's very hard to remember. How you would forget very that? Very hard to miss. Uh, well, that is just horrible news. I thought this city was a safer place. Oh, it generally is. That's why it's caused so much of a stir. Yes, and the, this um, authorita, that uh, handsome orc man, mm. that handsome young orc, um, he was investigating these murders, and now the lamplighters being arrested, and all sorts. Oh, my goodness. And how I long thought ago the lamplighters were very well considered. Well, well oh, they are. Of they are very much, my dear. They, you know, they provide all these wonderful magical lights, and they they make all sorts of wonderful engineering and and magical devices. You know, they started off as simple lamplighters, and generally they weren't very well regarded in the city. They were sort of one of the poorer guilds. Um, but then, yes, this uh, they had the, this family of dwarfs who had these all these ingenious ideas, and they started making these magical lights, <coughs> and, you know, they would charge people a, a silver penny or something to have them in the area, and people were very glad for it, you know. It's much safer to have the lights on. Um, but, uh, yes, now they're working. Apparently they're trying to look at building, you know, machines and, and arcane devices that can help with all sorts of other things, not just lights. They're thinking of renaming themselves, you know, to the to the Artificers Guild. Um, I see, the Artificers Guild. Um, uh, this, sorry, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit caught on this um, this grisly murder you were talking about. Yes. How long ago was this? Oh, it must have been oh over a week or so now, I think. But uh, yes, some criminals apparently they broke into the shrine, likely thieving and stealing something from it, um, and they caught one of the priestesses and bless her, she was she was caught in the in the act and was killed and. Uh, they were caught, but I heard that they escaped and ran off up north somewhere. So this is the. Uh, I'm trying to piece this together. <laughs> the uh, the it relic might be thing. totally unrelated. Wasn't wasn't the um, unless it was a, yeah, the with, relic um, that was then taken to the mine. The lightless. Yeah. The light. The hand of the lightless pilgrim. Yeah. Was one That's a tiny the cobalt. It's there not, was there was a. It's not the group. I can't remember if it was stolen from Ashen's Rest though. It was people were no, so it wasn't mentioned. Was Ashen Resident? I don't think it, uh, the location was mentioned at all. I remember there being a thieving and also a killing. <laughs> a priestess was killed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 you're right. You know what? It's all coming together. You guys got there eventually. You got there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> you got there eventually. Yeah. It was yes. an rest. I've yes. got it written it down. As, 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 as it comes in, this is a bit of clarity in that, yes, that she is talking about the murder of a priestess, which is what led to the events in Burnell, right. and then so forth, yes. 
Hey, calm down, YouTube comments. <laughs> we got there. We got there. <laughs> but yeah, you and, and it, like you've got to think from this person, this regular civilian, from her perspective, it's like, oh, a week ago there was this crime and the the authority was investigating. Now a bunch of lamplighters have seemingly been arrested in 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 broad daylight. Um, so to the normal citizen, they're like, oh, is it connected? Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So, but Maybe. whether or not it's, you know. Not in the way you might think. Um, but yeah, so she happily sits there and gossips and, and sort of tells you some bits and bobs about that. Yeah. Um, um, uh, Rowan is brought back in and rejoins the group. I am for um, all about the situation and yeah. that's all caught up. Yeah. Okay. So what did you find? Uh, are, we, are, are we leaving, actually? <laughs> I think probably, yeah. We're, as we yeah, catch we're, up, we're probably wrapping up and going out, My right? My fingers are getting wrinkly. Sure. Mm. More pruny. I can grip the water floor. Okay. Like well, you enjoy that, dial. Rowan, but I think we're... Rowan's just crawling on the crawl floor. Crawling around. <laughs> Trying to be grippy. a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, by the time you went to the bath, <coughs> you've sat there and had the bath and things like that, um, we're probably looking at, like, maybe 10.30, 11 a.m., like, you've spent a couple of hours sort of travelling and then having your baths and having these conversations, the ritual, that sort of thing. Um, by the time you get out of the bath, we're looking at just before noon, uh, 11 a.m.-ish. Um, yeah, it's you... The baths have cleaned you up. Um, you definitely, for Rowan and Xanthius... It hasn't helped right. with this kind of sense of dread and this kind of lingering feeling that's kind of clung to you. And now that you know what it is, it's a bit more... You kind of almost can feel it like a, a shadow that's been stuck to you. And no matter what you do or what you think of, your thoughts keep getting distracted by these images of fear, images of horror, um, things that you don't want to be true. Um, these kind of elements kind of keep plaguing on your mind as you do so. I'm trying to keep my mind away from it as much as possible, just distracting myself with tasks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, right. I think... Yes? Well, I'd quite like to talk to this uh, Zarontekis again, but you two are priority, so I think Thank we you. get you up to the cathedral, quick smart, okay. and see if they have any other options available. Uh, yes, I mean, what what is it, 300, 400 gold to get it solved there? I mean, that's nothing close to what we have now. But there um, might be someone who can who can cast the spell without needing true. the powder. It's worth a try. But what was it you found in the uh, the lantern there, the lamp? Oh, it's exactly the same as the other ones. Exactly Cursed. the same. Cursed. Oh, great, okay. It's got the same little disky. Right, so not only are they in the lamps in the streets, but also in the... Magical lights inside every building too. And that's why well, I we think don't know there if they're in every building. Well, not every building, but no. curious that they're in the bars. Although I suppose that's where most people gather. But no. it would be good okay. to find a way to actually is, track these things. Is well, there... it manifested as creatures, right? Yes, that's yeah. So unusual activity. Is... It, it was causing yeah, like a malignant aura, causing like water magic to become these angry spirits. Yeah. Now, before we go accusatory, mm. is there a chance? that they're just harnessing energies from different planes and it's a difficult thing to accomplish and if it goes wrong, then these things manifest rather than they are doing it on purpose. Well, attention still needs to be brought to it either way. If it's accident or if it's malicious, it's still having a, a terrible impact and bringing horrible creatures I just, around uh, citizens. I think we should tread carefully with us believing that the lamplighters are in on something and I doing think. something evil. True, but if the cost of a single light is a demon summoning or spirits or something like that, I prefer a torch. Or they, murder. They have murder. to be aware of this, at least. If they're trying to cover it up, then there's something going on. It's not as much they're covering up, more they're carrying on with it. Mm. Um, well, you can see they've even adapted the design from the one outside our inn to the, these other ones. They've adapted the... It's different, so they, they are aware to some degree if they're adapting it and making it whatever, smaller, better. The adaptions, I... Like, it's not... Was it that they were enhancing it or more that they were try, actively trying to correct it? Um, hard to tell, hard like, to just from examining, comparing the two. Yeah. Um, very difficult to tell exactly what sure. it is. You just know that the more recent one, the one that Teresa was supposed to install, um, is just 
more refined in how it processes. It's more subtle. The prototype one that you got from outside of the inn, that was more crude and more direct. Um, it would have, yeah, like it, it isn't as subtle in the way that it functions. Yeah. The one from the bathhouse and the one from the, um, that um, Teresa was supposed to install, they're meant to be very subtle, siphoning off small amounts of negative emotions. The one with Teresa was malfunctioning and it was almost grabbing too much, and that seems to be the same as the prototype. Like, they were grabbing too much at one time. Um, right. Which was maybe causing a more pronounced effect in, in return. But the one in the bathhouse is almost perfect. Like, you can see that it, it doesn't have any flaws like these other two do, and this one is... Again, based on what Blackwing told you in your own examinations, Anthias, you think that this one works in a very subtle way. It probably just, like, sips pulling away a little bit of negative emotion, maybe making somebody a bit more irritable or a bit more paranoid or yeah. a bit more jealous or a bit more angry than they w normally would be. Um, it's very subtle in the way that it pulls out this information. Well, so it's but still very much purposeful then. Yeah, it's still doing it. The device is doing it for sure. Mm. That's what the device is designed to do. It siphons negative emotions from people, sends it to the, the twin pits, one of them, and then it return, and then it's sending something back as well. It's like. almost <laughs> channeling something back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it could be, I, could again, be just I, energy. It could just be like energy to create a light. You don't know. You could be right, Rowan. I've only done very quick you are not examinations. Not I don't know how this works. Just from what I've presumed from the samples that we have so far. Now we have another one. Maybe that will benefit even further me having another check but again uh, uh, this is not my forte i think our neutrality will just benefit us in getting answers i mean in the eyes of the lamplighters we are still very much neutral that's why i mentioned it to the duke in a means to make it look like we hadn't discovered anything had gone awry um are you he has said anything are you making your way to the cathedral while you have this conversation? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you would get there. We shout most of it as we're walking past the Lamplighters Guild too. Sure. Um, around about eleven thirty, you arrive at the cathedral. Um, you've missed morning service, so the cathedral is actually relatively quiet. Quite honestly, most of the people who are here now are probably tourists. They're travellers who are like, let's go see the cathedral. Oh, isn't it pretty and lovely? Um, and you now can we've see got a, few... a house here. Oh, tourists. Tourists. Oh, yeah. God, everywhere. <laughs> um, you do see a few acolytes kind of milling around, um, having discussions with people and things like that. Um, and you also see a figure that you haven't seen up close yet. Um, you maybe saw, a couple of you saw them from a distance, um, but you see, moving around the cathedral, having uh, kind of hushed conversations with some of the acolytes um, and some people from town. These look like actual townspeople. Um, you see a quite a tall orc woman, uh, dressed in white uh, and gold robes um, of uh, Pyrus, and she wears symbols of Pyrus, the goddess of the sun, one of the two scions. Um, she has this golden blonde hair tied up. Her skin isn't green, it's more of like a kind of dark brownie orange. Um, and you see that she's wearing like these very loose fitting robes that show off a lot of her like body, her arms, her legs. And you can see that her body is covered in lots of these scars. And with orcs, their scars glow. They have these ancestor scars that kind of contain a slight. And almost an entire half of her body, so one breast and most of her chest, is glowing on one side. It looks like it was a, a tremendous wound long ago, um, and she's actually missing that breast and part of her body, and now it's almost glowing with light, like it's almost pulsing like a heart. And you can see it in the way the robes have been cut, almost showing it off. Um, she does have a few little pieces of armor, mostly ornamental, like a gorget around her throat. She has braces and greaves on, but also keeps a lot of like loose flowing robes um, uh, and movement. She looks a bit, a little bit older. Um, she's probably sort of in her sort of like 50s, but still very tall, very athletic, very physically fit. Um, and she is holding a host here. Um, and you suspect that this is likely the, the main priestess of Pyrus. Um, um, 
Gruff actually has met her, well, seen her before because he attended a morning service. That's what I mean, yeah. You've yeah. seen her at like a distance yeah, kind yeah. of thing, yeah. But I don't think you've actually met, met her. But he knows that she's the high priestess because she held the service. Yeah, yeah. Like, so you would definitely know that this is the priestess. I don't know if you've known, you've got her name yet. No, 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 no. no. Just yeah. attended her service. Um, yeah, so you, but you can definitely tell her that that's who she is. Um, and she seems to be like having some discussion with some townsfolk, um, okay. with a couple of the acolytes. So um, approachable. Not yeah, definitely thing, approachable. Yeah. Like, yeah, um, you maybe hear like a little catch. You catch a glimpse of their conversation. Just like, just make sure that they have whatever they need. Um, uh, so perhaps a slight, a very slight kind of yes. Make sure that they have everything that they need. Um, and she kind of notices you. Ah, welcome. Ah, your faces are not unfamiliar to me. Uh, welcome. You have come in the hours of our Scion Pyrus, uh, but I believe that you know my companion, uh, Brother Saverin, uh, uh, the Speaker of Secrets, uh, the Priest of Mele, quite well. Um, yes, we uh, gave our secrets and attended did. the ceremony. And I believe you have done more than that. You have done a great deed for the town of Ash and Rest, some uh, business in Riverside, I believe, with some creature that was summoned. Uh, you brought the young halfling woman here. Uh, How is she doing? She is fine. She has gone with the uh, brother Saverin, informed the high authoritor and the high marshal uh, after you spoke with them. And they came and uh, the uh, Miss Lavendale has gone with them. Uh, she was being questioned by the authoritor and the marshal. Uh, I am concerned that it is always possible that she may be connected to this business of whatever the, is going on, but I also am worried about her soul. Uh, but I believe that we have you to thank for preventing this terrible outcome. We merely did what was right with us in the situation. There is no merely when it comes to doing what is right. You do what is right by any means necessary. This is the nature of Pyrus. We must embrace our strengths, embrace our bold actions. Do not think to, uh, do not diminish the great that you have done. Well, priestess, I will now boldly announce that I have a curse of harrowing. <laughs> <laughs> and I also... Uh... A curse upon you both. Yes, we have attempted to cleanse the enticing devil with which we've been granted by Give me insight checks, everybody. I think my insight's lower now as well. Um, 60. Yep. <laughs> 16. Uh, four. I am spending one of my fate points, by the way. Sure. Natural one. Okay. Nat one. 16. 16. Higher, so 16 from me. 16. Four. Four. Um, so we got the 16 higher so far. So that'd be... Okay. Um, Daisy and Xanthius, there's definitely a twinge of disgust, I would say, is probably the best one, yeah. when you mention the enticing devil. Um, there's definitely, like, a reaction there of, like, ugh, that place. Um, you have attempted to deal with the spirit that haunts the hell. I have sent many acolytes to try and deal with the spirit, and it has proved tenacious. Yes, we have learned much of its story and uh, have attempted to uh, cleanse the place of the... And by doing so, you have become afflicted with a curse. Seems like it, yes. Oh. Bold indeed. Please, call me. I am Sun Sword Ilkara Lightheart. That is a, One second. a cool name. Sun Sword. Sun Sword Ilkara, I-L-K-A-R-A, -A, Lightheart. Wow. And you can definitely see that surname is likely not a birth one. It's like a like a, a title that's been given to her because of... <coughs> very fitting. Very fitting. Like, <laughs> yeah, like the orcs probably gave her that name because of the ancestor wound that she carries. Is some sort of like a rank? It's or? a title, yeah. yeah. So, um, like, our Arden Savarin, the um, priest of Melee that you met, mm. I think I just called him High Priest before. I'm gonna, it's, like, it's not a retcon because you wouldn't have known this, but his title is Speaker of Secrets. Okay. Um, so he is Speaker of Secrets, Ardis Savarin. God damn. And she is Sun Sword Elkara Lightheart. Yeah. Um, and she is. I have it within my power to help uh, banish these malignant, otherworldly, dangerous energies. 
And it is, of course, to protect your soul that we must do this. Uh, there is not a complication, but there is a small requirement that is needed. I am able to perform this ritual, uh, but I would require something in return. Is this the uh, silver? No, no. I believe that I can provide that. It is more... Pyris does not grant her magic to those who simply buy coin. It must be earned. Um, okay. You will need to prove yourselves. Uh, I, I'm willing to attempt to prove myself, but give me the actions in the... Uh, you were talking about the good we've done. Yes, indeed. Santheus. I just... You can't speak like this in front of the High Priestess. Show some respect. She's a representative of the Scions. I just what more would you like us to do? I'm sorry for this. Oh. I... It is fine. It is fine. It is a matter of you have done good deeds, of course. And I am very grateful to them. But you ask for something. Pyrus does not give freely. Uh, I cannot provide this magic without a service. A service in the name of the people, but also a service in proving your purity and strength. I will send word to you. I will need to consult with the light above, and she will instruct me as to what would be required. But I will send word to you. Okay. But you will need pay no gold. Provide me nothing more than this duty. I will only be able to provide it for one of you. Oh. oh, God's sake. Are you thinking I'm gonna make this easy? This is fucking... Yeah, I'm gonna make it easy? So, 100 gold for one at the baths? Yes. And then the requirement? Yes, well, uh, I guess you'll know where to find us. I can send messengers to around the city, around the town, but your... you own this enticing devil, I believe. The Duke granted it to you. Yes, well, it, yes. the land, yes. I would like to think, I would hope that you will not make the same mistake that its previous owners did, and you will reconsider if you open an establishment it's naming. It's likely to be our residence. Ah. Well, then. We haven't fully determined what we will do with it just yet, but. Mm. And we're all we going to live there. Consider the name. I would, cons I, I would suggest you consider it very wisely. Um. But yes, I will, I will pray to Pyrrhus and think of a fitting, uh, ask her for a fitting service that you may provide in exchange for her blessing to remove this curse upon you. Uh, but also, I would highly recommend that you go and speak with the High Authoritor uh, about this matter involving the Lamplighters. Yes, well, we intend to follow up as best we can. It's just... Uh... It's dangerous to know that Weak-minded individuals are within this place, corrupting souls, we think weakening the fabric of our society. Man, I don't know about you, Gruff. I do not like this person. I don't like her at all. <laughs> Gruff is like Gruff is like this is you know. This is very a much church leader. Like yeah, and also like. You know, Pyrrhus as a goddess is a kind of goddess of battle and war and light mm. is certainly the kind of figure that would give you strength and power when you need it and heal wounds in battle, but is not, I would say, like a, a very kind goddess. Like, you have to earn the strength that she gives you, right? Um, but yeah, like, yeah, and I think Gruff, like, being quite a religious person, you know that, like, yeah, anybody who is a devout follower of Pyrrhus definitely is, like, you don't get nothing for nothing. Like, you got to pay for it. Mm -hmm. You know, Melia is probably the softer of the two. Um, Pyrus is a lot more hard. She's like a like a commander or like a, a, a trainer. You know, it's like that kind of mentality. Um, well, they're fire. Yeah. The fire can burn. Um, well, if, if you would uh, like to message us or whatever it is um, to let us know about this requirement, then... A service. A service. Yes. Uh, do you have an idea of what this service may require? I have asked before when people have come seeking uh, the Lady of Light's blessing. Sometimes it is to 
defeat a creature of uh, some nefarious means. Sometimes it is to uh, perform a pilgrimage, uh, to provide, uh, to recover a stolen object, or to provide service in many different ways. Okay. I cannot say. Until the goddess speaks with me, I cannot say. You may, of course, speak with the other, uh, the priests and acolytes of the saints. Uh, their powers tend to be lesser. They require gold and uh, material components and things like that. Uh, but uh, they may be able to help you. Yes, well, we are still looking around. I fear maybe a pilgrimage might be just beyond our scope right now with this curse. Then let us hope that that is not what Pyrus asks of you. I hope so. Very good. Oh, I don't like her at all. I do not like her at all. Well, thank you for your time. You are most welcome. My time is one thing that I am happy to provide, seeking spiritual guidance or assistance. I also, it has been very pleasure to meet you, to know that we have brave souls willing to fight against the darkness. I wish you luck. Saints and Scions be with you. Saints and Scions. If you forgive me goes back to whatever she was doing before. <laughs> I don't know what it is, man. <laughs> it's something about it. Yeah, I hate it. I don't sure. like it one bit. It's That's just, fine. You don't have to like it's it. It's just a nice amount of sinister. Um, yeah, as you it's, guys... It's, it's sinister, isn't it? There's yeah, something really sinister. sinister. I don't know. I think she's been pretty up front. But then that's gruff. So. That's gruff. Well, what did she go back to doing, know. huh? Uh, she resumes a conversation stabbing. that she was having. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> she goes back to stabbing. <laughs> What? I don't like that oh, she's like, oh, oh she no, goes, she back goes that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I oh, she seems an innocent one. The fact that they had it out for people because they named a pub wrong and they didn't like the name of yeah. the pub. Is that, is that the only thing? Yeah, yeah. That's really yeah. just yeah. right? You know? Like, um, that's what it is. As you guys yeah. are leaving Bright Shadow Cathedral. Uh, you actually, uh, a kind of out of breath courier um, comes, is like coming up the stairs into the Dusk Rise district and seems to like, like checks a piece of paper, looks at you, checks a piece of paper, <laughs> and then comes running up to you. <laughs> A little bit pot-bellied, like a little halfling, got like a little bit of a tummy. Um, he's got big curly, very hobbity kind of like hair. And he's like, oh, oh, huh, I've oh, been chasing you ever since you left the baths. Really? Yeah. Uh, take oh. take a breath. Thank please. you. Okay. Um, I've got a message for you. For, for me or for us? All of you. All of us. Yeah, okay. just, I've got to get him. He's going to be back. Wef, I, I'll let you give you a second. You'll okay. be a minute. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want me to rub your back? No, I'm okay, I'm okay. Okay, okay. 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 Oh. Normally I walk, I don't do a lot of running. Why did you choose to run this time? Well, because it's important. I got paid, it's expedient, it's ex expedient really? delivery. I see, okay. Yeah, it's very okay. important, I was told. Would you want me to just take the... No, 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 okay, no, it's okay. fine. <laughs> um, and he pulls out of his little satchel. He's wearing the uniform of um, of the Clarion, which is like a courier service and the newspaper and things like that. And he pulls out a, uh, a very hastily written but sealed envelope okay. um, with a letter in it. Um, uh, and he just and he's like, um, uh, I didn't have a name, but I had a description, um, and it right. matches all of It matches you lot. Okay. Um, and I, I was told that I'd find you at the the uh, the old the haunted inn, um, and I went there and you weren't there and there was a lady who said you went to the baths and then I went to the baths and then they said <laughs> that, you had, that you had gone somewhere and, and then I saw you and you were making your way up here and I was right far behind and I've only got little legs and... <laughs> I a wild knoll chase. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, was, don't say knolls. Sorry. <laughs> Why not? They, they can hear you. They can? Yeah. Anyway, I apologise for his phrasing there, but thank you for finding us finally, and uh, thank you. Out of curiosity, what was the description? Um, it was it was physical description. It was a a, a big a big little lion man with black fur, uh, like he's dressed from from ice heart, and there was a big a, a half giant a yacht near, and he's wearing green, and he's got a big fancy loot on his back, and he's yes. got martins on his arm, Check. and then there was a, a cauldron lass with a, a lovely little dress and corset it thing, does, and it does say the bright ones, hair, yeah. and then oh, it doesn't say that on the envelope. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then it says, uh, "Sorry to know, but you," <laughs> um, and Fair then a, a, a gold dragonborn, a gentleman with um, described as you were. A good um, it, 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 it comes from um, it comes from uh, Gilmas. Tobias. Just gentle, okay. But yeah, um, and it says uh, on, the le on the letter, yeah, on the letter, unfortunately I didn't have time to actually make you a letter, um, but it says, uh, to, to the brave adventurers who uncovered this uh, problem, um, is what it would say. Mm. Do we know Gilmore? Gilmore, he's the lamp 
no. No, you've got it, yeah. You remember yeah. him because he was ahead of you in the queue at yeah. the Duke's audience. He is one of the guild masters for the Lamplighters Guild. Ooh. Mm. Interesting, interesting. And it's actually sealed with the Lamplighters sing, uh, symbol on the wax seal. And you put a curse in the envelope and just sealed it up. And and sent it. <laughs> 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 Not another curse. Um, yeah. Well, it. thank you for delivering this this message to us. If you'd like to, I mean, do you have any that's more right. deliveries today? Um, I've got plenty of deliveries. So he is make an insight check for me. Okay. Any, uh, anybody can make one, by the way. That is a, a, a eleven. Eleven. Uh, 20. 20? Four. <laughs> Six. Four? Six. Um, Daisy and Xanthius, he's kind of lingering um, because it's kind of customary that you pay him like a small amount of coin as a tip. Right, is this delivering like a, the message? Uh, this is, an, is this an Alpha a wide thing? Yeah, like, it's like generally this. couriers are like, Sorry, you get paid to deliver the message and then you kind of get another payment for receiving it. But it's kind of like a discretion, it's like a tip. I don't it's know. Like, he's, like, he's, like, he's like waiting for his tip. He's like a valet. He's I'll like. Give him a stick of gum. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very kindly, sir. I don't, I don't. It's very home um, alone, I like it. Um, I my apologies, uh, yes. Uh, Daisy probably wouldn't do it because yeah. she would never You've probably had never had a money. courier, yeah. Or had a courier before. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't know what tipping someone yeah. is. But he's definitely like... <clears throat> After the journey you've taken, it seems only fitting that you... Three silver? Oh, that would be most kind of you, <laughs> sir. Yeah, I'd be really kind <laughs> of Is that you. more than normal? You don't know. <laughs> 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 you tip him what you want. Going going you tip him what you want. I said Go three take silver. A letter to like that, that gold dragon board. <laughs> it's really good tips. <laughs> when, I, when I said three silver, I was like, that seems low. He'll up me. <laughs> no, he was like, absolutely fine. Here you go, three silver. Thank you very much, sir. That's very kind of you. Oh, I, I do appreciate gold. it. Oh, that's very, it's made my morning. Thank you very much. I've got lots of deliveries to make now. Bye bye. Okay, okay. off yeah, your trots. I, I think that was a it's quite bigger, good tip. You, you realize that. It's probably used to getting bronze coins. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> Three silver is like, I'll have that. I know that the gold probably value. probably costs like three silver to send that letter. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just know that the gold value is like heightened higher, in, this, yeah. uh, in this universe. Yeah. Well, Hey, he's happy. He, he did a lot of... He chased us all around town, so it only makes sense. Yeah. Uh, where we, do you want to go to open this up? I kind of wonder if we should open it in the presence of uh, Zarontekis. If we go and find him, yes. It seems like uh, the High Inquisitor is investigating all of this, and we should probably tell him of our findings with the disc and everything. That's true. Um, where did they haul off these these people from the... Did you say the forge? They went to the forge. The for yeah. The forge. The forge. Which is the barracks. It's like the keep where the... the, the is that accessible are. or is it... Yeah, yeah, okay. It's where the bounty board was, if you remember. Ah, uh, okay. On the way home. Mm -hmm. How could home. you get a letter and not want to open it right away? I really want to open the letter right now. Uh, well, I mean, it would be good to know what's graf, in there, graf, sure, graf, but... Graf, 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 graf. Can you sense <laughs> any magic coming from it? No, I don't do that. Okay. It's a detect magic spell. If anyone can detect any magic, now would be a good time. Anyone? No. Nope. Good. Great. <laughs> a party just, that doesn't have it. <laughs> this this <laughs> could be evidence. This could be evidence, so I don't want that's to. That's why I'm not putting my hands all over it. Mm. Two fingers on the corner, that's all. You put... Oh. Finger and thumb, even. I'm not opening it now. I I, I think you're right. Let's open it in front of Zarenturkis, but we just need to go find him. You know what we should have done? We should yes. have used the Curia to send a letter to Ophelia updating her on these matters. I mean, we're basically heading back that way already. All right, we'll let her know on the way. There must be a more expedient way of communicating with people than chasing across them Across water. Across, OK. Shouting really loudly across water. Well, there is that, but we yes. don't want to shout too loudly. Sure. So you guys are going to make way to the forge? He just rolled a lot of things. <laughs> it's the weather. It's changing. <laughs> it's changing. Are you making your way to the forge to try and meet with Zaron Tekis? It seems water. most prudent. On the way, yes. Who? Prudent. Mm. It would um, behoove us. Yeah, it would behoove you. I've been playing uh, a lot of Dragon Sword. <laughs> <laughs> About midday, you begin Sorry, making your way nice. um, towards the forge. It means that you have to pass through the main plaza again as you make your way down there. Um, you definitely would notice, sat outside the Grumpy Hog enjoying a lunch, um, you would spot uh, Sister Inquisitor Malady and Sister Inquisitor Benedicta, um, who just kind of give you that very casual, like, 
good morning wave mm. and are just watching you go. Daisy um, doesn't wave back. <laughs> but you see, directly. like, a Benedictor especially would be more like a sort of probably, like, doesn't call out, but is, like, waving at you, like, oh, good morning or, like, good yeah. afternoon. Yeah. Malady's just sort of <laughs> watching as you guys walk past. I wonder if they have any ability to remove any curses. You want to go ask him? No, not at all. No, I don't want to speak to him again. Well, as you guys arrive at the forge, um, you can see that there's a bit of a hustle and bustle about the place. Um, people are being sort of ferried to and front. There is a guard out the front, and in fact, you actually would recognize this guard. Um, it is Cadet Bliss, the typhling hey, uh, that you met a long time ago. The stew of yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, how are you doing? How's oh. it going, everyone? Well, it, yes. It, hello, Bliss. Well, hello, Rowan. Yeah, oh, yeah, bring it in. She kind of gives you a hug, this like kind of, Stamp. you know, like. <laughs> like um, Seems a lot of commotion today. We heard there's been things going on this morning. <laughs> yeah, I would hope you've heard. I've heard that you guys are kind of tied up in this. Well, would you uh, believe, Bliss? Yeah, I know, right? After all of that in Burnell and now in this as well. No. Yeah. What? I cooked your stew with a bunch of cobalt. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Did they like it? It's good. Oh, yeah. great. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm glad you've been practicing. I've done in Ashen's Rest. Oh, brilliant. I love that. That's great. Yeah. Anyway, um, we're cursed. Sorry, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> I mean, you might be aware we were gifted the enticing devil the tavern, haunted the haunted place, and we spent the I, night. I, I, I didn't know that. That's both awesome and also terrifying. Oh, it's right? Somehow yeah. both of those things, exactly. Yes. Yeah. But, no, no, I meant all this business with the lamplighters. I heard yes. that you, you've accused the lamplighters guild of like being like cultists or something. Oh. So this is just. That's just out there. No, no. Okay. Well, it was. I mean, so well, the other people don't know you by name, but they said that this group of. Adventurers came into town, and that they they took a lamp like <laughs> one was a half giant. Yeah, and one they said that one's man. a big giant, one's a gold dragonborn, and one's a lion man from uh, Ice Heart. And, and does... then they said that there's this weird looking death lady. Um, and then they just sort of said, and a nice cauldron girl with them. That could be anyone. That could be anyone. They don't know that's me. Exactly. And where does information come from? Well, they said that. Well, basically, we got a report in, right. um, and and you know, early uh, like yesterday, this was like the middle of the you know early morning, just before the Duke's audience, old Marshal, the, the High Marshal comes in, he gets a squad together, him and him and the High Author uh, high Authoritor and, and her apprentice, Tekis, mm. they all have a big meeting, they go stomping up to the, the Pharos, the light, light lamp, uh, the Lamplighters Guild, yes. and they they're there and they like start tearing the place apart. They start, you know, they're working with the guildmaster. They, sure. they pull people in, and the whole time, like I'm hearing these rumors that yeah, this bunch of adventurers come in. They said that there was a fight down in Riverside, and some big smoke monster got summoned by like a, a cultist. She like a little halfling cultist, and she summoned this smoke monster and was trying to kill everyone. And you guys stopped her, and then you went and told the you went and told the priest, and then he told the marshal. And it's yeah, I mean it's it's I don't think everybody knows, but like I. I've heard about it. Okay, well, I mean, rumors spread are. quite rapidly, it I'm seems. I'm a little concerned about this letter now. I Yes, we were hoping to meet with Zaron Tekis or... Well, I'll, I mean, yeah, I'll let them know that you're here. I think they definitely want to speak to you. I mean, probably the high authority actually probably want to speak to you. I, any, we, we, we do have the... We have the thing from the light, don't we? So I've still got the other two as well, we, actually. Um, yeah. The... the um, were any names released for any of these people? Oh, no, that wouldn't be released. That's No, that won't get released for a while, just in case. Even I don't know the exact, you know, people that were brought in. I don't, you know, I don't know their names or anything okay. like that. Because, I mean, it's not too un wild for people to expect or identify these mysterious people as us. It's just I'm more concerned about the halfling you were talking about. Um, I don't think their names she's, should be released. She's not a cultist. We never said it was her. Well, I, listen, she was brought in with the rest of them and she's been, you know, questioned by the authority and the marshal and everything else. Like, I don't know, that's... They've been talking, like, apparently they've been having conversations with the Duke, they've been speaking with the Sun Sword and the Speaker of Secrets. Like, this has been a big deal. Like, a load of people yesterday. It was, like, meetings all day yesterday. Um, and, like, this this is a big thing, right? Okay. You, you should go and speak to the High Authority. I'll, I'll let her know. Um, uh, 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 give me a second. And then she runs off and she's just like, oh, can someone come and cover, cover my shift? I, I need to take some people to speak to the High Authority. And you see, like, a couple of guards like, Bliss, yeah, fine. And they come over and they swap places with her. And she's like, right, come with me. Um, uh, is anyone else extremely concerned that we may have started something that we can't go back on? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you get led through the forge, uh, through the main sort of courtyard. You can see a few uh, soldiers are doing training. 
containing uh, things like that here. Um, you can see that there's a stable with a few drake mounts and stuff in it, and you are led into a tall, fortified kind of keep building. Um, you are led through several rooms, there's guards posted everywhere, and you are eventually led up into a very fine looking office with a window that looks out onto the city, like a reinforced like window that looks out onto the city. The office is very well furnished, but the desk and chair that is sits in the predominant place in front of the window is actually sized for a halfling. And right. sat at this desk, currently in a conversation with Zaron Tekis, um, is a best I can describe her is like a grandma halfling. Like she's got gray curly hair. She looks a little bit like Miss Marple or like a kind of like We've Agatha Christie. Before, You've seen her before in the Duke's audience. Um, she's wearing the um, the sort of uniform of an authorita, which is a like dragon's head outline with a draconic eye, very prominent. Um, and, uh, and she's kind of sat there, she's taken off her hat, she's taken off her big coat, but she's sat there in like a little vest and trousers, um, and she's currently poring over like papered reports and she's scribbling a few things down. Um, and when she's like, come in, uh, when Bliss knocks, and she's like, oh, hi, Authorita, my apologies, um, uh, 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 private private Bliss, um, I've brought those adventurers, the ones that you, you we've been talking about. And she's like, oh, Excellent work, Private. Yes, I was hoping to send word for them, but wouldn't you know, look at this. Blessings upon us, they've come come to speak to me. We thought it would be apt to uh, seek you out. Wonderful. Um, well, please, come on in, come on in. Uh, Bliss, would you mind fetching a few chairs from one of the um, other rooms, from one of the meeting rooms, and bringing them in for our guests? Let's fetch some, some tea and water and, and some snacks and things like that as well. Let's get, um, let's get everyone comfortable. Um, I believe that you know my apprentice, um, Zaron, um, and you see Zaron Aaron Tekis kind of folds his arms, very handsome young orc man, long coat, sort of leaning up against the bookshelves. It's just like, we are familiar. <coughs> Hello again, Aaron. Hi! Hello. Um, well, wonderful, isn't this lovely? Well, you've been quite <coughs> busy. I... Quite busy indeed. Yes, I suppose we have. Apologies, I think we might all be a bit shaken, or at least I am, quite shaken. Uh, shaken? What for? Well, we didn't really expect news to be spread so quickly around the city. Oh dear. Tavern, well, you did whatever. cause quite a stir. I mean, Speaker of Secrets contacted me urgently. The idea that there could be a cult of planar worshippers, that causes quite a stir. Forgive me, yes. I've not fully introduced myself, have I? <laughs> and she gets off her chair, doo -doo 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 -doo, and she's small even for a halfling. Like, this is like a grandma, like, she's probably, in a human year, she'd be in her 70s. Right. So she's even smaller than a halfling because she's kind of shrunk down mm -hmm. a bit. Um, but she looks up at you with the most bright, inquisitive, curious eyes, like bright blue eyes. She's kind of got all the curly grandma hair face is just leathery wrinkles um, and she kind of smiles um, and you can see that several of her like teeth are actually like missing but not because they've fallen out but they like broken uh, or like they were broken a long time ago and she just never got them replaced um, she has scars like on her neck you can see that this is probably somebody who has probably seen her fair share of fights and things like that as well um, she has like a wand tucked into her belt and then a little short sword as well um, and she's just like I am High Authorita Eremina Whis uh, w uh, Willowthorn Eremina Willowthorn Erem Erem E R E Era, E R E M I A Eremina Eremina sorry M I N A yes. Eremina Eremina Willowthorn and I am the High Authorita for Northvale a pleasure so why don't we have a sit down, and you can tell me all about this, all these matters. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Her name, sorry. Willow, Willow Thorn. Thorn. And that is actually when we're going to take our first break. So we've run over a little bit, um, but yeah, uh, we will take our first break. Let's here. Have a chat with yeah. just have Willow a chat. Thorn. Just have a little chat. chat. Let's just just spread Some news. Chat. See, I love playing Gruff because Gruff is so like straight and narrow. This Nothing is the natural hide. conclusion to him. And yeah. he's just it's like, just yeah. Stuff is progressing quicker yeah. than I was expecting. But, I mean, I guess Gruff expected that because we took the... the you the, took Teresa to the bright show at the um, Cathedral. Yeah. Yeah. He said he was Speaker going straight away. Secrets. Man, he loves to gossip, yeah. doesn't he? Well, oh, he told I mean, us. He said he was going to go. His to name the is... literally told you. No, he, he said, said, I'm going to tell the High Marshal, yeah. the High Authority, and the Duke in the morning. He said. Not and you, everybody and you, else. And you had a whole... He did, well, That's all the people that are in the room with us. I wasn't there that episode. <laughs> anyway, we are going to take our break. We will see you in five minutes. Yes. We'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye. Ah. Thank you. Goodbye.
Oh, uh, my... <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Let's jump into the episode of High Rollies, he says, and then switches off. I... <laughs> I disconnected so hard from reality. <laughs> Where did you like, think you were then? I, I wasn't oh. anywhere, Tom. I disassociated oh so hard, I wasn't even present. <laughs> Give me one second. Okay, one second. Okay, yes. Because, like, my brain also is trying to get my notes and... noise with the back. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear that again. <laughs> okay. Welcome back to part two of Althea the Dragon Empire. <laughs> Last time our heroes uh, have been investigating a number of matters uh, that are of somewhat great importance. Rowan and Xanthius discover that they are under the effects of the Curse of Harrowing, inflicted by the spirit of Tyria, aka the Scarred Lady. Uh, this curse will linger and has the potential to claim their minds and their lives if it is not dealt with. Um, to resolve it may require money, it may require some sort of service to one of the temples, but there are various options available to them. They also learnt that the events concerning the Lamplighters Guild have perhaps grown beyond some of the party's expectations, uh, with some of them being arrested, uh, the Lamplighters, that is, being arrested, um, and also news of the, play, the PC's involvement in the matter having uh, reached the eyes and ears of a few different individuals. They find themselves in the offices of the High Authorita, Eremina Willowthorn, an elderly halfling woman um, and the uh, sort of tutor or mentor of Zaron Tekis, the authorita that they met in Burnell. Um, and they find themselves sat uh, tea, uh, water, um, some snacks, fruit and breads and olives and things like that are brought in, laid out on a little table to the side. Um, Thank uh, you very much, Bliss. Uh, 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 Bl Bliss is like, yeah, Bliss is like, no, no problem. Um, is there anything else, High Authorita? And uh, Eremina is just like, no, dear, you've done a marvellous job. Thank you so much. Okay. You wouldn't mind just waiting outside and you can escort our, our friends here back when, when we're finished. Um, and she's like, of course, yeah, absolutely no problem. Um, uh, if you wouldn't mind, close the door, please. And then she shuts the door and Eremina is just like, well, please help yourself if you're a bit hungry. And she's like already like picking and like making a little plate of like things she's got like a bit of bread she's got some it's very airs, very yeah it's like you know get some olives pours herself a cup of tea uh, takes it back to her desk she actually um clambers up she puts it on the desk and then she goes up on a chair crawls up onto the desk and then sits on the end of her desk with her little legs dangling <laughs> off at the side um kind of reaches over picks up a cup of tea puts it in her hand and mm. she's just like well Quite a stir we've been making, haven't we? Uh, um, we weren't hoping to make such a stir, I will say, but a stir it seems we are making indeed. <laughs> wasn't hoping to make a stir. Well... Fighting a, a smoke beast in the Riverside District? Uh, presenting a favour to the Duke uh, oh, in the uh, public that audience? one we knew about, oh, yes, okay. but... Oh, yes. We didn't expect to see him Staying in a haunted it. inn. Uh, yeah. That was not my decision. Misfortune seems to find us. Yes. Well, one person's misfortune can be another's fortune. So, as I understand it, you came from Burnell, and the matters of Burnell, I believe, my apprentice has already dealt with, and Zaron has some ongoing thoughts regarding that, but let us put that aside for now. With the matters here, the lamplighters, my understanding is that you were accompanying Illuminator Lavendale Teresa, the little halfling, you were accompanying her uh, on, a, on a mission. You had been hired by the guild to repair several of these lights. Is that correct? Yes. To guard uh, the engineer while she repaired the lights. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, provide were, um, a bodyguard service. They were concerned Hired. about other guilds interfering and... Yes. And indeed they did. If I'm, if I, the reports of the witnesses in the area are correct, you were, you encountered the Carpenters Guild and the Blacksmiths Guild and um, there was some... Uh, fighting uh, that took place, and um, uh, again, some casualties. Uh, but again, let's skip over those for now. That can be a, another matter for another yes. time. Okay. Something changed, however, and Teresa Lavendale, illuminated Teresa, was something appeared, some sort of magical smoke that seemed to attack uh, yourselves and the buildings nearby. Um, you subdued her. 
you then took her to Bright Shadow Cathedral, where you told uh, the Speaker of Secrets about what had taken place and asked him to check on Teresa. Um, and that is, as far as I'm aware, your involvement in all of this. If I may, I Please. don't I don't believe that Teresa summoned this creature. Why not? I believe that this ca- creature came through Teresa and was using her body as a conduit. Mm. And what makes you say that, Gruffith of Tremorrow? The creature was very... How do I say? Very cognizant of who it was. It was in control. Teresa, her body, her mind, she was quite limp at the time, and it was very much the creature who was speaking directly to us, threatening us, talking of the Hellion throne. But is it not possible that one could offer themselves up as a vessel for such a creature? Uh, Perhaps it was part of this Teresa Lavendale's plan to be possessed by it in some way. I don't think she had a plan. Uh, She seemed very new at the Guild. She was new to the job, yes. And also she was quite scared uh, at the time of her possession. And after the fact as well. Yes. Had no memory of the event. Indeed. And her panic grew and grew until it manifested this smoke. And you are, you believe that these were genuine, these responses. This was not an act. This was, you believe it to be genuine, this um, lack of knowledge of what she was doing, but also this fear and trepidation. If it was an act, it was a stellar performance. Mm. As yes, indeed. Uh, we, one can never know, can we? Uh, but still, it is a possibility that this Theresa Lavendale... Did you know Theresa Lavendale before this job that you were you were hired for? No. Never encountered her before? No. Have you encountered anyone from the Lamplighters Guild before? You have no connections to them? None at all. Only the one we met... Alicia to... Tefio. Alicia Tefio. That is who you uh, got they... the job from? Yes, they posted the job and said to speak to them. Mm, interesting. She is not a name that has come up in um, our previous invest- in our investigations yesterday. Uh, miss, and the high authority looks towards you, Daisy. Uh, you are a cauldron, yes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you have not encountered the, the lamplighters girl before. Have you ever been to Ash and Rest before? No. It makes sense that your other the other companions did not, but uh, I was wondering. Who so you've you've never encountered the guild or heard of them before? No, this is the biggest place I've ever been. All right. All right. Um, she makes a few more notes and writes a few things down. Now, let us go back to um, this... Uh, what happened with the with Teresa, the Illuminator. Do you have... Do you know of why this took place? I don't know if Gruff... Would you have told them about the actual disc and what you... Yes. The actual thing you found? Did you tell them about speaking with Blackwing? No. Wait, sorry, when did we last speak? We spoke with... Uh, are we are we talking about because I do think speaking with um, Arden, Arden, the high priest. Yep, that was after you had met with Blackwing. So you went to Blackwing first. Mm. You asked Blackwing about the disc and what it was and what it meant and what it could do. You then went and spoke to. I don't Arden. think we brought up the disc. No, we didn't. We just. Bring I don't think you worried did about either. Teresa. No. I don't I think, think it was you did all either. about Teresa. Yeah. That's why. That's why I want to check that I've got my. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. So. Um, uh, as I understand it, this a lot of this is connected to Illuminated Lavendale. She was with you. She was the one who was seemingly, let us use your own word for it, possessed. Uh, if whether whether intentionally or not, uh, that seems to be the the truth of the matter. Is that something took hold of Teresa and used her as a vessel to attack? Uh, you subdued her um, and then took her to uh, High Priest Arden um, at the Bright Shadow Cathedral. Do you have? any idea of what may have caused this possession? Did you see Teresa performing any spells? Did you feel any sort of uh, otherworldly presences? I believe we have evidence that the lights, the Everlights, caused the possession. Mm. We have been examining several lights and we have found a strange disc in it. This is the one that we took from the light she was working on. Yes, Mm -hmm. the one that this creature may have uh, appeared from or was channeling through this device. Uh, you see the High Authority, Zaron, would you mind? Um, and Zaron will come up and just be like, hand yes. over. You go, Zaron. Uh, he takes it, you see him, 
use a familiar spell. His eyes glow for a moment. He casts Detect Magic, um, and he begins examining it. He's just like, the magic's a little bit beyond me, High Authority. I, the enchantments here are not something I've ever encountered before, but there is definitely... I mean, to me, it looks like a simple device to conjure light. I can't see anything more connected to it. If you're just handing in the disc, or are you going to actually show the secret, like the unlocked bit inside? Oh, I thought the, di the disc Remember, you was split in half, like you have to oh, open I it Oh, I see. Up. Okay, yes. Well, in that case, yeah, I would. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, when you reveal that, he opens it and he goes, ah, much more curious. Um, he looks at it and says, the enchantment is complex, a little bit beyond my skill, but there is definitely something here more than just conjuring light authority. And, and she goes, ah, how curious. Um, and she says, like, can we mark that as evidence? Uh, and he takes it over to a box. He puts the disc in there, and the box is shut. He touches it, and it seems to glow and seals. Um, we need knock as a spell. So keep in mind that you do not have the We've got another pro, got that, the first disc. The, the, first. The, Therese, let's call it Teresa's disc. Do you reveal the other ones? When we first arrived in Ashen's Rest, there was trouble at the baths with spirits that were manifesting. Mm -hmm. We dealt with that. Okay. And at the time, obviously, we felt unconnected to the events of this possession of Teresa. Mm -hmm. We went to the bath today and investigated one of the lights. Yes. It has the same device. Really? Do you have the device? I also have that one as well. Much no, smaller. No, we don't. We put it back, didn't we? Or did I, you take it to You put the light back. back. Yeah. Or did you put well, the, I, with the disc in? Or did you take oh, it? You could have slipped the over. disc away. I guess, yeah, I would have taken the disc. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you could Because I think the guy just saw you fiddling with the light, and then you could yeah. have just put the light back. Because you have to take the light completely off to get the disc, okay. right? And then you could have put this back and then given him the thing. Yes, so this one then installed yes. within sure. the smaller lights within the bathhouse, not just the street lights. Ooh, Zaron. Um, Zaron comes over, takes it again, right, shows, it opens it in the same way, examines it. It seems to function. There's something different about this one versus the other one. Um, I don't know what the difference is, but there is some slight difference. There is a just... third one as well. Yes, well, okay. cursory glances at the comparisons between the two. The second seems to be much more subtle um, an effect. Um, but yes, there is a third as well, much more primitive, I suppose. Yes, and we think this might have been an early version. Uh, because we have been given the enticing devil as per our writ, and there was a broken light outside of it, we started to make loose connections that the events that transpired at the enticing devil, that a murder had occurred, we started to connect it with the light, so we investigated the light near our property. Yes. Now, this one broken four years ago, but indeed contains a similar disc, but again, much more primitive than the recent um, ones. At this point, the authorities are going to take all three discs. Yes, yeah. You lose them all. They are put into evidence. Um, okay. If you want to make a note that the discs have been submitted to evidence, you may. Um, the high authority is like kind of li listens intently, like listens to you all, shows no sign of like dismissal, like just nods, lets you kind of s explain the story, Rowan. When you talk about the murder at the enticing inn, she does kind of a slight sort of forlorn look on her face comes about. Mm, a murder, you say, at the enticing devil? Yes. One was not formally reported, but I did have my suspicions back in the day. Unfortunately, I was too busy to properly investigate. Uh, no crime was reported, so I had no authority to look into the matter further. It was believed that um, uh, the owner's wife uh, had simply left, but... Her I, spirit remains. Yes, when I heard stories about the spirit that was in the area, I, I must admit I did have a feeling that something untoward had happened, but I have no idea where the, the husband now is or anything oh, beyond. Oh, any leads would be helpful, because that's how we could help lay her to rest. Yeah. Hmm. It's a matter we very much wish to resolve. Well, I'm sure that we can help one another. That I do have some preliminary reports. Um, I did try to investigate a little, but I was unfortunately not as... I did not have the time. I, there were other matters I was called to. Um, but yes, I did keep some records. I will, I will give you what I have. Um, I, I only have a small amount of information, but uh, okay. not much. Um, so, these discs, quite damning evidence. Certainly something was involved. Um, 
based on, and I believe that you had mentioned to the High Priest that there was something about the Lamplighters connected to all this, Teresa being sent there to do this and some sort of connection to the lights. We sent a number of, um, we sent Z I sent Zaron uh, along with the High Marshal and some soldiers there this morning. We investigated a number of the sort of private chambers of some of the Illuminators there and some of the other members and some, shall we say, unusual literature was found. Um, we've arrested a, a handful of the Guild's members. Um, the Guild Masters are currently claiming that they had no knowledge of what was happening, that these people were acting independently, um, that they are shocked and horrified to learn of what was going on. Um, as we speak now, this Teresa was the one who was responsible for inserting these discs. No. She told us on the night that she was given the lights and there are parts of the guild workshop she's not allowed in. Because when we were trying to speak to uh, the blacksmith's guild, trying to parley, trying mm. to create a calm... But she was the one who had to install them. Yes, and that's all she knew how to do. She didn't know as how... As far as she told you, sir. Well... It is my job to ask these sort of questions. It is not that I doubt your belief or testimony, sir, but in my line of work, I do not take anything I am told at face value. Facts, evidence, is what we need here. When I look around the room, are there any Everlights in here? Uh, there probably would be a magical light in here, yes. Yeah, there probably oh. would be, mounted into the ceiling. You'll get it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just concerned um, if these lights are enhancing negative emotions, as they seem to be doing. Um, I mean, would it be worth investigating the one in this room? Certainly, if you wish to look at it. Uh, I'm afraid are. I can't quite reach. <laughs> I, I, I've... Rowan could probably reach up there. Rowan's probably the only one who can actually reach, because it's quite a high ceiling, and like it's mounted into the ceiling, right? Like, normally, a ladder would need to be brought in, but Rowan, you can probably just reach up and pull it down. Okay. I'll do that. Yeah, you, you reach up, you pull it down, you lower it. And it's like it's an independent object, right? Like, once it's kind of removed from the ceiling, it looks like it's been attached there with, like, nails and hooks and things like that, or, like, you know, pitons or whatever. Um, you pull it down, um, and you hand it to Xanthius, because Xanthius has examined them before. There's no disc in this one. Oh. Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, this one, untampered with, unaffected by mm. whatever it is they've done. So they are picking places specifically. I had a working theory that the bathhouse was selected because it's a very public place. There was some mention of ley lines. Yes, also that. <laughs> mm. Very curious. Very curious indeed. If we the had people the... people did tell us, that the guilds that we did speak to on that night did tell us that they, they'd been feeling angry and that that's why they kept breaking the lights. Mm. Sadly, there has been... Um, bad blood between these guilds for... Oh, the rivalry has existed since Ashenrest's founding, but it has been uh, particularly bad over the last sort of ten years, mainly with the rise of the Lamplighters Guild. They were a very... Uh, they were not a particularly popular guild for a long time, but the arrival of these new technologies, the Everlights and their development of other magical trinkets, have sort of elevated them. They've also cultivated a strong friendship with uh, His Majesty, His Draconic Majesty. The other guilds have... Well, sadly, some of them are very jealous of the Lamplighters. Others are sort of allies of convenience. Um, the Stonemasons and the uh, Lamplighters are quite close. It is very concerning. Clearly, there is something at work here. We cannot, we cannot even possibly dismiss the idea that there is some sort of plot. The question is, is, is this engineered by a handful of low-level engineers who are using this as an opportunity to go out and install these devices in some terrible heretical plan? Or is this more... Is this grander? Does this go beyond a few low-level engineers? I mean, these... Go on, Rowan. <laughs> of the people you um, took back to the forge from the Lamplighters mm. Guild was one Tobias. 
No, Guildmaster Tobias. No, no, he was uh, he was most forthcoming. He was happy to work with us. Uh, he gave us full access. He, in fact, wanted us to. He made sure that we searched all of the private rooms, and uh, he was seemed aghast. As I said, I, I don't take anything at face value, but certainly his impression was of a man who was shocked and appalled uh, by what uh, we told him and what was uh, discovered. Well, um, good. First of all. <laughs> yes. Uh, the reason we seek you out, in fact, is because a messenger approached us with a letter from Guildmaster Tobias. It yep. is still sealed. We didn't think it appropriate to open the letter ourselves. <laughs> I mean, and do you think that this is something that I should know? Or? It might be related. I, well, by all means, if you wish to read it, but it is your, your message. By all means, read it if you wish. Okay. Just in case. Uh, yeah, I'll... Open it up. Sure. Pull that letter. A curse upon you. <laughs> Double curse. Everybody, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Fireball. Everybody takes their steps. No, you open it up and a very hastily written, not very long, uh, brief sort of letter is inside. It's on very lovely paper, luxurious paper. Okay. Um, uh, it has uh, a stamp of the Lamplighters Guild emblem in the top uh, left corner. Um, it says... Uh, it says, apologies, uh, I do not know your names. Um, I know that uh, you were uh, contracted to perform a service for my guild, um, and that in the process of which you have uncovered a most uh, horrible uh, plot. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to invite you to meet with me uh, for dinner uh, to express my thanks um, and gratitude. Uh, Guildmaster Tobias and Guildmaster Janya Cooper. Uh, Tobias Leto is his name. Tobias Leto, Janya... And Janya Cooper. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'll obviously be reading this out as I... Mm. Uh, if that was sent today, then the timing would make sense. It, uh, we informed Tobias of everything this morning. We did not know about these discs. We merely knew that there may be some connection to the events in Riverside and the Lamplighters Guild. We conducted a search of the premises. We found texts and hmm, interesting literature about demonic forces, shall we say. Um, oh. Many of the people that, the people whose rooms we found these elements in, um, they have either been, uh, they have either not told us anything or they have pleaded their innocence that they it was planted there, that they are, they are being framed. Um, unfortunately, uh, a very common uh, matter. Um, but it sounds like uh, Tobias, uh, having learned of what has transpired, is seeking to provide you recompense. Or perhaps dissuade his own guilt in the matter. I could not say. Well, would it be advisable to have one of the Forge be listening in on our dinner? I think that that may tip the hand, my good uh, tall friend. I would suggest... And please, this is only a suggestion from an old woman who, um, who has been doing this for a while. If I would suggest you go and meet with this Tobias, act as if you have received this message, uh, that you have not spoken with me, um, I think it would provide both of us a benefit if we pretend that this conversation has not yet happened. But I would greatly appreciate your support and to inform me of any findings that you have. My desire is to get to the truth of this. If we have a cult of some demonic, nefarious force, then it must be removed. It is a sickness, a disease that needs to be cut out of this place. How deep we cut is the question. Is well, this... It has often been my case that I, when I have encountered those who have fallen under the sway of nefarious, malignant powers, it is very easy for those who do not have much in life to fall under that sway. And I have dealt with several cults and individuals who have um, attempted these sort of plots before. It is far more concerning if this goes greater than that. I do not know which. I, do, I can tell you that His Draconic Majesty has a long friendship with Tobias's family, as well as that of the chief illuminator, Morris Goldsight. They have been friends for a long time. Without, the Duke himself has told me directly that if I'm to pursue any investigation against the senior members of the Lamplighters Guild, I require hard evidence. We were told the same. 
That's why we haven't really said anything yet, because... Very wise of you to do so. We just wanted to make sure that Teresa was okay. Teresa is being held here in the forge for now. I am making sure that she is obviously... We do not mistreat, uh, you know, our uh, guests. Um, but she is a suspect. And until I have hard proof that she is not a cultist, I cannot release her. If I may, I'm just going to jump out. Did we explain the whole, like, the link of the magic and the kind of link to the twin pits and feeling... No, nope. we didn't. Nope. Gruff is, gonna, on Gruff is going to explain that now. Yeah. Gruff is going to explain as much as he knows. Do you explain how, where you got that information from? Uh, say, because it was from Blackwing, like, where I you would got probably say, like, we consulted someone and they said this, and I guess... Okay, yeah, she, so when you say that, you, you explain everything, you say, we consulted somebody, so this, and she'll, be, and she'll say, whom did you consult? Uh, forgive me, I do not think any of you to be masters of the Imperial Academia. Uh, Blackwing? The elf. In the, in the tower with mm, ravens. I'm familiar, I'm familiar with them. They seemed very formidable with magic and given the nature of this device. And they've been around a really, really long time, so we mm. thought that maybe they would know. Yes, they have. That presents another interesting quandary. Blackwing is an elf. They are outsiders to our world, and they originally came from a planar realm, a realm known for its trickery and deception. Blackwing has their own agenda. I'm sure that what they have told you is accurate to a sense, but how much of it is the truth or how much they have kept secret from you, I could not say. I don't think they're interested enough to do anything kind of plots or scheming or anything. No, I don't think so either, but that does not mean that they have not revealed all that they know. I just bring this up because I mm. definitely think the connection to the Twin Pits is true because when the beastie came out and started threatening us and mm. stabbing us, uh, they said, and I remember this specifically because it was so odd to me. Yes, please. He said, the barrier weakens, the Hellion throne will never see this coming. She writes that down. Mm. Specifics. And the this is, please. Sorry, the barrier weakens, it just. Yes, yes. No, I, uh, the Hellion throne, uh, that, uh, that alone certainly implies sort of a demonic connection, certainly, or a fiendish connection, I should say. This is exactly what is needed. Facts, specifics. It is within these specific details that I think we will find our answers here. Consider this. Meet with Tobias. Glean what information that you can. If you can find a way to prove that either Teresa is innocent, or that Tobias, or perhaps any of the other guild, perhaps Janya Cooper, perhaps the Chief Illuminator, if you can prove that they are the masterminds behind this, bring that evidence to me and I will make sure that justice is delivered. And I can make sure that you are paid for such services as well. I will share what information I have with you and will work with you as best as I can. If I could just say one more thing for Teresa. Now, I understand you can take this whatever way as you wish, but this was my reading of the situation. These discs, they feed off of negative emotion, and when enough negative emotion has charged the line and sent to the hells and brings something back. At the time, she was terrified. She was scared out of her wits, hiding nearest to the Everlight that we took this disc from. Mm -hmm. I genuinely believe that was an honest emotion and she didn't know, and we didn't know at the time because we didn't discover the disc until after the encounter. Mm. So I genuinely don't think she knew because you can't fake an emotion like that, especially in a large dose to summon something like the beastie. You are quite correct. But sadly, feelings do not change facts. The fact is, is that she was the one who inserted this disc you have revealed its nature to us. We now see that it has been inscribed with this powerful enchantment right now, Gruffith of Trenoro. I'm afraid that she is our best suspect. We have very little to prove otherwise. I do not doubt with a moment that what you say is true, that you genuinely believe this woman to be innocent and that she has not done anything wrong and that she is as much a victim of this as anyone. But until I can prove it, 
Right now, her fingers are on the murder weapon. I understand that. I just wanted to share my observation. And I am very grateful for it. And it is from this I can see how earnest you are. I can see how much this means. And that, that drives me that there is more to all of this. Now, my hands are often tied. I am a very public figure. If I go to Tobias and I start asking questions, he will immediately know why I am there. He will think that I suspect him. That may cause him to hide evidence, destroy it. Perhaps if he is involved in all of this, or if this other, the other members of the guild are involved, that might drive them to accelerate whatever plans they have. But you... You are strangers to this place. You can play the innocent mercenaries who did not know any better. In your speakings with Tobias, did you, I suppose you haven't uncovered anything particularly unsavory? <coughs> you trust this man? He has been a, a pillar of this community for uh, several decades. His family have been operating the Lamplighters Guild for years. They have, he has helped lead the Lamplighters Guild into the success they are today. He is generous with his money. He funded, he helped fund the school. He has helped fund many of the infrastructure around here. He is a good friend of his Draconic Majesty. <laughs> He's been a cordial gentleman to me whenever I have met with him. And this uh, Janya Cooper as well? She is a little more cantankerous. Uh, certainly one who, I think that in my professional opinion, she is certainly a woman with secrets. What those secrets are, I could not tell you. But she is more cantankerous. Um, but she is dedicated to her guild and very protective of it. I believe that, uh, well, I do not like to jump to conclusions. Understood. I like facts. Um, well, for Teresa's sake, let's hope we can find you a better suspect. One thing I should inform you of, it is privileged information at this point, the chief illuminator, Morris Goldsight, he was not at the Lamplighters Guild, and in fact, the Lamplighters Guild is claiming they do not know where he is. He vanished early this morning. What Were they aware? Uh, Morris. Morris Goldsight. He's the chief illuminator. Was Morris aware that you would be arriving? No, no one was. Though he caught them by surprise. I see. I don't see how they could have known. The only ones who knew that we were even potentially looking at them was the Speaker of Secrets. He reported to myself and Lord Marshall as soon as the as soon as the sun had risen, as soon as he had finished speaking with you, I believe. As soon as there was light, he came and spoke with us. Um, we immediately went up to the Lamplighters Guild to investigate. And he left this morning. He vanished. They nobody saw him come or go but he is not there now, and they do not know where he is. If he is uh, intending to flee, then someone must have informed him. If it was not you, then I would... Uh, then perhaps our Speaker of Secrets. There's more secrets than I believe. Or indeed Blackwing. Or indeed this elven mage, yes. You said your hands are tied in matters such as this. Um, uh, how much... Let me, let me just briefly rephrase. My hands are not tied. I have great authority as the high authority. Understood. I, in <laughs> terms of going to a dinner with a Tobias Leto, <laughs> um, I, how much freedom do we necessarily have here if we uncover something? Uh, 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 you are not deputies of my office, nor are you members of the King of the Duke's Guard. You are independent mercenaries. Should you... Should you commit any crimes... Oh, we don't intend to. Well, uh, she uh -huh. just says, if you are to commit any Again. crimes... <laughs> I would say this. If... If you commit a crime in the service of the Duke and for the betterment of the Empire, as High Authorita, I can look favourably upon such actions. If one is to, in the same sense that if um, if you are if you defend somebody and you kill them, in, you know, kill an attacker in the process whilst trying to defend an innocent, then the law can be um, lenient towards you. In the same way that should you, I don't know, be caught breaking into the Lamplighters Guild, shall we say. Um, if you are able to find and provide evidence that shows that there was nefarious matters, uh, then again, I can be lenient. If you do not provide that, then I must use the full weight of the law against you. 
I understand. Consider this a very private discussion, and I find that sometimes working, working in the shadows can yield great results. Huh. Oh, I'm sorry. Shadows are a bit of a sensitive topic at the moment. Oh, well, I apologize. I did not expect... Well. The haunting. Ah, yes, yes, yes. You have taken over the ship of that place, yes. I have heard um, quite a few horror stories. Uh, even some of even even some of the Duke's guard won't patrol that area for fear of it. If uh, if we attend this dinner party tonight and things go a bit uh, woo, you know wrong, is there a way we can contact you directly? Or indeed, would you want us to contact you? Are you capable? Are any of you capable of casting spells? I am. Yes. Yes, yes yeah. but maybe not what you are suggesting. Oh. There may be a risk of it being destroyed in the process, but I believe you that you there is a chance you may be able to use it. Um, and she goes over. She unlocks a drawer on her desk. Um, she rifles through paper, and then she pulls out a scroll about yay big. Um, and it's wrapped, it has the seal of the authorities' office, so the draconic head with the eye. Um, she locks the drawer back up and she will... You, Gruff and Xanthius, uh, Gruff and Rowan, you both said. Um, so probably to Gruff, actually, as you've been sort of engaging her most. She will probably... This is a sending spell scroll. Um, it is quite a... It may be a spell beyond your means, but you may still be able to use it. This is the best I can offer you at this time, I'm afraid. Use it to contact me directly. Thank you. Gruff looks momentarily panicked. <laughs> okay. Use that, whether or regardless of tonight's matters, consider that a gift, uh, a way of saying thank you for what you've provided, the information you've provided me already. But yes, if there is something and you feel it needs my immediate attention or the attention of the Duke's Guard or the Lord Marshal, the High Marshal, send me a message. It is my duty to try and enforce uh, the Empress's law here, and if something is amiss, I would like to know about it. Okay. Um, do you have any fear that we might be being watched by the Lamplighters Guild? I would certainly. <laughs> I'm a very paranoid old woman, uh, sir. I, I consider that whenever one is involved in matters such as this, well, keep an eye on the dark. Okay. Uh, that's why I ask if it's worth us meeting often with you. Um, My, if I am, I am often called away, unfortunately. Uh, Zaron and I are the only authorities for the North Vale, so if a, if a cri if message comes in that we are needed out in some village to oversee a criminal um, a judgment or something like that, I'm afraid that we must be sent. I will try and send Zaron where possible. I, I don't like to travel so much these days. My, my knees aren't so good for it. Um, but uh, yes, I will try and make myself available. But um, if I'm needed by the Duke or anyone else, I'm afraid that they must be my priority. But uh, yes, please do send at least words to me whenever you can. Okay. I will be here. I don't tend to go very far. <laughs> um, but yes. Uh, okay. I, yes. You were also I'll... asking about uh, the matter involving the enticing devil. Mm. Let me get you my file. And she goes over, and what appears to you to be almost like a piece of wall with a mirror on it, um, she goes up to it, um, and <laughs> she uh, whispers um, some arcane words, and you watch as that wall vanishes, and it leads into like a walk-in closet, but instead of clothes, it's just ranks of like library shelves filled with books. Um, and she goes over, and they seem to be categorized by date because she counts like years and dates and months and things like that. Um, and she pulls out a large ledger, flips through it, um, and pulls um, some several sheaves of paper out, puts them in like a little file, puts the book back, returns, speaks the command word, the wall fades. Uh, comes back into existence and she hands them uh, over to you. Um, it's a very brief report. Uh, I won't read it out entirely. Just real quick, what is that spell? What spell? What's the, what's the arcane word she's um, saying? There, it was more like a command word. It didn't necessarily seem like a spell. It seemed okay. like a command word to activate or deactivate this wall. Okay. Uh, do you want to make a perception check to see if you could hear them? There's no way I hear them. I, it's just, you know. Well, yeah, right. You never know. You never know. I got, uh, oh, what is my perception now? Did you get a nat 20? Nope. I didn't, no. It's, I got 10. 10. It's, you, you heard like a very, very whispered kind of... Yes. Yeah, nothing okay. muttering. Um, 
but yeah, the, she hands over to the report to you. The report doesn't really tell you much. Uh, it reports that um, uh, that Tyria uh, Medrick uh, left Ashen's Rest on this date. Um, a few days later, the husband, Kavon Medrick, left. Um, t- uh, the notes are claimed to be going to Kalskaris uh, to chase after wife send someone to check uh, that, uh, you know, kind of like see if that's true, um, check with gate guard. Uh, reported seeing Kavon leaving on that date. Um, guard, and then it names the guard who they spoke to. Okay. Um, uh, no record of wife leaving. Um, uh, oh, no, sorry, it would say record of wife leaving but only seen at a distance. Uh blah, 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 kind of like some little detailed notes. Right. Um, was it the same guard that... Uh, yeah, it was the same guard that saw them, yeah. And it yeah, was okay. it was uh, several days apart. It was about three days apart as well. Okay. Um, uh, hauntings began shortly after husband left, yada, yada, yada. It kind of contains most of the same information, but you do get this guard's name that apparently yes. saw both Tyria and Kavon leaving um, okay. the city. Put it on the pin board. Connect the lines. Um, yeah. Um, and it would be God. Uh, I need a random name. Uh, Ooh, that's a weird <laughs> name. Uh, it is God. Uh, it, 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 he would be Sergeant Gavin. Sergeant Gavin. <laughs> Let me get another. Sayer. S a y e r. Gavin Say. He's a human God. He'd probably be. He'd be like. He'd be like four years older, five years older now. So. Oh, God. He's four years old. Four years old. He's four years old. He's four five years older. A real prodigy. Um, Saying that, Quill was only three, so. Yeah. So he saw the wife leaving first, or the. Yeah, he saw the wife leaving first a few days later, but only at distance. Yeah, he didn't actually speak with the wife. But he did speak to Cavon. He did speak to Cavon, yeah. Okay. Um, yep, Sergeant uh, Sergeant Gavin. What did I say? Gavin Sayer. And this, this Sergeant, is he still. A sergeant, I suppose. Uh, where, uh, where I find uh, if you're asking Eremina, she's just like, I'm afraid I don't know. You would need to inquire. Right. Um, I would suggest you speak with some of the guards out in the in the forge or head up okay. to the north gate. Uh, this was, and it, the report also says north gate, yes. uh, Grey Forge gate. It also mentions that you would, uh, or someone would check up to make sure that they did go to Kelskaris, this cabin. Unfortunately, I was not able to send that follow up report. I, again, my I work see. took took priority. I'm afraid. Okay. It. Please keep me informed if you learn any more. If I, if it is, if it is true that uh, Kavon committed murder, especially against his wife, and I did not investigate it, I, I will deeply regret that I did not look into it further. I would like to know, and if I can offer you any more assistance in that, please. Uh, if you like, I would suggest that you maybe send a courier. You could always send a courier up to Kalskaris to check. Um, I, I have the address of Tyria's family, and that's on the report. That's you know there. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you wish to send a, a letter or a, a sending spell to them, you could do that. Yes. Uh, uh, do you have a good description of Cavon? What he looks like? Cavon? Yes. I mean, yes, we have a description of what he looks like. Yeah, it's all in the report. Okay. Um, I mean, if they are in Kelskaris. My plan was to message um, the wife's family, Tyria Adler at the time, her the Adley, Adler family, they live in Kelskaris. I was going to message them and ask if Tyria arrived, but sadly I was not able to. Often with these cases, and if something is not directly reported, if we do not have you know, clear proof that somebody is missing or that something nefarious has happened, it is I have to prioritise other matters. Um, cool. I'm trying to remember what actual like evidence we have just to say, by the way, yeah, definite murder. Aside from bloody ghost, knife, find but bloody the knife and the spirit, and, well, and the spirit. Yeah. Do you do you take the uh, testimonies from a ghost? Unfortunately, it is so easy to manipulate uh, the responses from the dead. Um, spells that can communicate with the dead are generally not admissible into our authorities' uh, jurisdiction. Shame. Doesn't She's got tr- quite the story to tell. I'm sure, and I hope. What I would suggest, and this is me speaking as a as an authorita, is if you can find this Kavon, if they still live, get them to confess. Often the guilty are, you would be surprised at how often the guilty will admit to their crimes when pressed. Not always through force or violence, but sometimes through misdirection, sometimes through simple guilt. Once confronted with the horrors of what they've done, uh, that way I will be able to prosecute him with the full power of the law. We do believe there may be an element of possession again because of the Everlight 
mm. with this more powerful disc in it. Mm. And the timelines match up from the neighbor's testimony and all that. It is within my rights as authority to accept um, extraneous circumstances into my judgments. If that was the case, if, if this Cavon committed a murder whilst under the influence of the Lamplighters killed, that would not only provide a sense of lessening Cavon's sentencing, but it would also add to the crimes of those responsible for this plot, if there is one within the Lamplighters Guild. If they have been responsible for another murder, then ultimately that will be made against them as well. Mm. And justice not, must be sought. It would be good to have justice for Tyria. I... I agree. As I said, if I can help you in any way. Um, yes, well, we will call on you when appropriate. Please um, do. I think we have a dinner to attend. So you might need to get those fancy clothes out again. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> well, it has been an absolute pleasure to meet all of your acquaintance. Zaron told me much about your journey from Burnell to here and the events of Burnell as well. And her eyes kind of flicker around all of you. Um, but I think that this lamplighter's matter is a far more pressing concern right now. Um, Zaron very obviously, don't need to make insight checks, does not agree with that statement. And he has been, like, glaring at Xanthius and probably Daisy a little bit the whole time. Like, he's like, they're, they're, you two are hiding things. <laughs> like, he's kind of like, mm. <laughs> but he's unfortunately not in a position to say anything yeah. right now. Well, as I said, misfortune keeps finding us. We're just doing our best to help out as best we can. That is all one can do in the face of ill luck and fate. Uh, but still, let us let us hope that justice will prevail in the end. Uh, Rowan puts the light back in. <laughs> Awkwardly. <laughs> yes, thank you it's very been much. Dark this entire time. <laughs> no, the window, because it's daylight. Yeah. The windows have enough light coming in. She's like, "Thank you very much, my dear. Thank you. Please help yourselves to olives. We've got plenty of fruit still. Yeah, take it with you. Take it with you." And she's like, starts putting I it in might, your pockets. That's all right. Would you like a candy? Yes. Yes, of course. And she goes and on her on her desk she opens up like a little uh like a little brass bowl. She opens it up and inside are little hard candies and she's like, You can take two, go on. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hmm? uh, I suppose. Yes, go on, take one. To watch my teeth. Yes, yes, you should. Well, I, I don't have any soft ones, I'm afraid. They're all quite hard. Uh, just suck on it. No more the sugar. Yeah. Oh no, no. Little bit of sugar doesn't hurt anyone, yes. Yes, go on. Oh, thank you. It might make me feel much better, yes. Mm. Uh, Would you like to? Yes, 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 of course. Speaking yes. of feeling better, you don't happen to know anything about uh, curing curses, do you? I know that one should seek out um, uh, a priest or priestess or a mage okay. of some sufficient power. <laughs> I know that you should not yes. ask me. Fuck off. Okay. I, I, I am an investigator. I know. Uh, I'm Just not in a, case. Uh, a um, fine spellcaster. Well, I don't believe we should take up much more of your time. We understand you have. This has been very insightful, and thank you for the discs. They will prove most crucial evidence should this matter. Uh, if we had jurisdiction and authority, we'd love to investigate more lamps around the town to aid in this. Uh, hmm. We believe they must be There's installed. a lot of them. Yes. It is something that I could assign some of the guards to go and do. Uh, the difficulty will be if we find, if lots of them don't have this disc and we damage them, the lamplighters then could go to the Jew, can argue that we owe them recompense. Do you have, do you know of any way that you can tell if these lights are being affected. Well, just no ley lines. Ley lines ley were lines, mentioned, yeah. yes. Just um, trying to map those. I'll speak to, we have a couple of mages within the Duke's Guard. I will speak to them and see what they think. Um, but now that we know that they are within the lights, we can certainly assign people to check them, but it will be a laborious and rather tedious process. If you do learn of a way, that one can identify a light that has been affected or this, this device has been inserted into. If you can find a way to do that, that would be very useful. I, uh, it would show that this is a greater conspiracy. If most of these lights are affected or like there is a, a plan or some sort of pattern to how they've been laid out, it will show that there is a greater plan at work here. That was our concern as well. Does she have a map in here? Yeah. Okay. It's just like <laughs> There's, it's probably got like notes pinned into it of yeah. like ongoing investigations. But also, authorities aren't just like investigators; they're also the judges. Mm. So it's also like 
so and so accused of stealing like appointment three o'clock judgment like there's like she has like notes and things like that yeah. in that book um she's kind of like the judge jury and executioner yeah. all in one and investigator as well i guess in the time when we were talking about you know we found this one here I you know, point on the map, it was mm, this yeah. place, this place, this place. Yeah, it looks like she'll probably do that after you've left. She'll yeah. probably go in and start like putting notes down and things yeah. like that. It might yes, also, my dear. It, it might be worth looking at ones that have been broken and recently repaired, because if, Very true. if they've repaired some, that seems to be what... That is their opportunity to install these devices. That's that's a very good thought, my dear. That will help us narrow down our search considerably. Well, just the, the guilds wouldn't let them repair in that area, so mm. if there's repairs elsewhere... I would say as well, and I experienced this myself, I don't know if it's just because that lamp down, uh, was it by the docks? Riverside. Mm -hmm. By the riverside, was broken or what, but I felt a definitive feeling mm. of, of anxiety and, and a lot of negative emotion when it started affecting me. And the, uh, the chap from the uh, Blacksmith's Guild, he mentioned that a lot of them was feeling angry and negative emotions, so I don't know if they remember a particular point or something like that. Well, look into it. We've not had any great reports from the citizens about these sorts of feelings. Normally that sort of thing is, that would be reported if there was any sort of malignant or, or sort of lingering issue. But, and, and the guilds have been, you know, we've had reports from the blacksmiths and the carpenters uh, uh, guilds and some of the, the traders guilds as well complaining about the lamplighters but unfortunately the the rivalry in politics a lot of it is just bluster and a lot of it is often accusations thrown around without any sort of proof i will however look back into it perhaps we've had reports of these ill feelings in certain areas and that will help us uh, narrow down the searches possibly um yes but as we said the only ones we found is Broken, primitive, and subtle. Keep me posted, and if we are able to resolve this, I would be grateful for your assistance, and I'll make sure that you are suitably paid for it as well. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Could we get an advance on that payment? <laughs> make a persuasion check. Ooh. Ooh. Fake dice. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Go for it. Persuasion. Please don't burn it. Oh, he didn't. <laughs> uh, it's not good. Five, eight... Uh, nine. I'm doing doll eyes. <coughs> Please. You can give advantage. <laughs> no, so I mean, I, no, right. I'm not actually doll eyes <laughs> All right, okay. Um, she will just say, the high authority, I mean, it will just say, kind of smile at you and say, ah, unfortunately, the, uh, the, uh, the offices of Her Imperial Majesty do not operate on advances or credit. Uh, do the work and you will be handsomely rewarded, but I'm afraid I'm not authorised to provide you any payment because technically we're not working together yet. I tried, lads. We need secret outfits. Really? That's your first? Wow. Do you have any ideas of what we should be called as a unit? Uh, a mercenary, a mercenary force. Mercenary company, yes. Oh, like a sort of group collective name. Collective name, mm. yes. You're I mean, asking me. Well, what we, sort of mercenary companies have you worked with before? I've worked with. I've worked. With, I've had a very long career, my dear. <laughs> I've worked with quite a few. I've probably forgot the names of half of them. What were the most memorable? Oh, um, I mean, you generally tend to remember the sort of extreme ones. I feel, or ones that are particularly clever. Um, okay. There were the. Um, uh, there was a, uh, there was what were they called? Uh, the the blood axe marauders, uh, very violent mm, yes. folks. Not quite um, hitting, I suppose. There was uh, Too violent. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, the Emerald Quiver, a group of wilderness experts from Morn from uh, from Misswald. Um, uh, let me see. Um, uh, Humperdink, Rumperduckle's uh, band of merry men. Um, okay, is that one stuck out because it was ridiculous. Was this led by a Humperdink? That was the funny thing. No, that wasn't even his name. No, <laughs> no, no. It was the name of his uh, pet badger. Badger called mm. Humperdink. What was it? Pump, knuckle? That's correct. Yes. yes okay. <laughs> 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 um, but as for you, I, I, I'm afraid I do not know you yet to make a suggestion. But I will think of it. The pillars of. The pillars of something. something. We'll figure it out. And it's got to be clever now. Mm. I don't like pillars. The pillars. I, I feel like pillars fits you, sir. We are all pillars. Uh, well, you I are. don't get pillar vibes from these two, especially. The two of you, I can see being pillars, but these two, I don't see as pillars. I couldn't hold up the ceiling. I'm a lion, not a pillar. No. 
But you'll come to it. It will come to you, I'm sure. Well, right. It would be although worth I it. guess I could be called a caterpillar. No. We must leave. We've <laughs> taken up too much of your time. <laughs> so much of your time. No, you're more than welcome. Thank you for your great information. Um, good luck. Thank you. And like I said, <laughs> do watch your backs. If there is Threaten. a great, <laughs> there is a greater plot at work here. Yes. They will not like the fact that you have disturbed whatever it is they were trying to do. We'll be careful with our conversations in public. I would advise it. Yes. We'll just have them in the haunted house where nobody wants to come anyway. Uh, that does provide you oh a no. safe place to speak. Nobody it's will not come safe there. at all. Well, I must, I must secret. see you all out now, but thank you so much. Uh, Bliss, Private Bliss. Um, and you hear the door open like, uh, y yes, High Authorita. Uh, would you mind escorting my guests back out of the forge, please, my dear? Um, oh, yeah, absolutely, High Authorita. Yeah, no problem. Can I also pass my compliments to Bliss's uh, extremely good uh, professional care aiding us from Burnell to Ashen's Rest. You certainly can. Make a persuasion check for me. Okay. 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 You want a fake dice? He's okay. right there. 14 plus persuasion. 18. 18. What? She kind of looks at you and like, well, it is always nice to hear that we have capable young men and women who are able to do a great job. Yes, she is extremely good at her work. Good to know. And you see, like, Bliss is kind of, like, blushing. It's just like, oh, Rowan, you don't need to, you don't need to say anything like that. No, it's fine. Like, I'm just just, just doing my job, man. Um, yeah, no problem. All right, come on, come on, you lot. And then sort of shuffles you out and, like, kind of nudges you. Like, what'd you do that for? <laughs> it's embarrassing. Um, I know. Uh, Aramina just kind of stands by the door. And there's almost, like, a little ominous hint as you walk down this long corridor of this little, tiny, elderly halfling just stood in this open door, and she just kind of raises her hand to her chin... Now, eyes narrow a bit, just watching you leave. And then she's out of sight as you go down the stairs and out of the, for uh, out of the forge, basically. Um, but just seems to be sort of drinking you in as you leave, like watching you go. Um, Someone yeah. with that veteran status mm. that's got those scars and is that kind... Yeah, she's working. ...has got some... Stuff going on. She said, watch she's, our back. She's smart. I still prefer her to the woman at the church. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't well, that's, care. That's the worst. She's so disarming. Yep. Maybe. Maybe. Um, we'll get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Nah. Right? We'll be murdered before then. Probably. We'll be dead as hell. Yeah. Um, well, I guess we don't want to go for dinner without Ophelia. Do you have an address, this place? <laughs> we haven't even, like, agreed. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you know where the, it's the Pharos. Yeah, the, that's the right. Black Lighters yes, headquarters. Yeah. Did, oh, they, did they right. say <laughs> dinner tonight at the Pharos? Yeah, it was, well, they didn't say dinner. They just said <laughs> we would like to invite you to a meeting, like, tonight. Yeah, like, we would like oh. to meet with you. They said dinner. Did, it say, did said I say dinner? dinner? Oh, in that case, I said dinner. Food yes. will be you supplied. You promised us yeah. food. Then it is a dinner. BYOB. Three courses. Doesn't it have to be a fancy dinner, though? But it is in the Pharos. It is in the light. A light lamp, uh, good lamp take away. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, you guys can make your way back to. Uh, oh. This would probably be sort of like I guess like one, two o'clock at this point. Yeah. Um, you make your way back to. <sighs> you make your way back to the enticing devil or the old current, you know, the abandoned inn. I'll wait outside. Um, uh, oh, you're waiting outside as you, you get there. Uh, you see that Ophelia is speaking with um, someone who's at the inn, basically. They're stood at the door having a chat with somebody. Um, a real and physical, actual person? Real physical, actual person. They look like a courier. Uh, dressed in oh. the, the the same outfit as the clarion, uh, the, the little halfling who chased after you, but they are a human. They just look like a human man. Um, they're wearing an outfit, and they hand over a package and a very ornate-looking envelope to Ophelia. We're getting all the letters today. I know. Seems okay. everyone wants to contact us. Um, Present. As we like walk past this guy. Mm. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. The 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 guy just sort of says like, oh, good day. Good day. Uh, delivering mail for us. Uh, if you are, uh, oh, I can't remember the name, Xanthia something, uh, gr Gruff, oh, uh, yes, I, that, yeah. uh, I was basically told deliver to the, uh, the old inn, the abandoned inn okay. down here. Uh, who sent the message? Um, anonymous, just uh, came from, uh, got, got dropped off at the offices to mm -hmm. deliver today. Mm, well, okay, uh, thank you for your... No problem. My friend, grip shoulders. Okay. Your rates to Kelskaris. Use a fate dice. Yeah, I use a fate dice. Sorry, I should have announced it. Um, can you roll 
just roll a d20 plus your dexterity for me, Rowan. Oh, oh God. It's currently zero. That's a solid two. A solid two. Um, you go to, like, grab this person, and they kind of take a little shuffle step back, like, to avoid being touched by you. And they're like, whoa, man, <laughs> like, hey, come on, like, Sorry. You know, consent and all a, that. Yes, um, my apologies. What, what, would, what did you want to know? What, what? Rates to Kes- Kelskar, so if we were to send a letter or Ooh, a you'd, ha- you'd have to go to the you'd have to go to the office and ask about that. Right. I, I don't know off the top of my head, I'm afraid. Sorry. Fair enough. Um, Hello, can I roll an insight check on this? Yeah, yeah absolutely, you can. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure, I'm sure, sure. using a fate dice. Okay. Yes, please do. Okay. We're going to shut this guy down. 16. 16. Insight, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I'm going to spend an insight. Oh, sorry. Oh. You you rolled, but you, you rolled before you you picked up the it's dice. That's true. That's true. All right. I'll allow it. 18. Yeah. It was an 18. It was an 18. I miscounted my insight. Plus uh, three. This person would have a pretty high bonus to this. Um, 18. <sighs> On insight... The way that they kind of avoided Rowan touching them was kind of weird, but it kind of makes sense. Like a big, big tall man grabbing you out of nowhere. Some people might like reflectively jump back. Um, yeah, they just, yeah, they're just, they are as they appear. You don't pick up on any other behaviors or anything. They kind of like look like, yeah, sorry guys. Yeah, your, um, your package, I think, dropped it off with your friend there. I gotta, I've got to go back. I got, I got more work to do. Does his so. uniform match that of the guy that we saw earlier, the halfling we saw earlier? Make a perception check. <laughs> what, 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 what do you want to do? Make a perception check. You can make a perception check, yeah, yeah. You can absolutely make a perception I check. I would have been on the insight stage, so I would have helped with that. Natural 20. No. Oh. <laughs> 11. 11. <laughs> Daisy. Hello. On a natural 20. Maybe it's just because you're cauldron, right? And cauldrons take quite a lot of pride in how they're dressed, you know, and things like that. And you're just aware of, like, what people wear. And... Looking at this person's outfit, <clears throat> it's really similar to the one that the little halfling was wearing earlier. But something is odd about it. Um, it's not necessarily the outfit is wrong. It's almost a perfect re- it's a perfect replica of what that outfit was. But as they turn away from like Rowan to like look at Gruff, a piece of their coat almost like light passes through it in a weird mm. way, like it's not real. Mm. Uh, Rowan does not notice that. Yeah, no, Daisy's the only one, just Daisy's just the only one who spotted that. So are they facing Gruff? Just yeah, so imagine that like they're walking down the street, right? Like Gruff, like Rowan went to speak to them, and they went, whoa, man, back off. And then they like turn to Gruff and they're like, yeah, 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 blah, 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 I've got to go now kind of thing, like, you know. Can I... Um... Go, oh, thanks, and go, hi, Ophelia, and walk as if I'm going to the house, mm-hmm. and then just turn around and grab. Sure. Uh, I'm going to make a... Give me a stealth check to see how, like, well, like... I'm using a fake dice. Okay. I think... That's the yeah. last one. Well, you know what? I, as, as it's the last one, I'm going to burn it's one burning. and spend it on my uh, my uh, check here, my acrobatics oh, no. check. I'm trying to think of a way to give you some help here. You can give advantage, yeah? Yeah, because I think I would... I haven't noticed the... Coat. The I, outfit, haven't, but... I, I didn't do an insight check, so I would be asking him, like, I've made this mistake before. Yeah. Um, did uh, Mr. Ophelia uh, like you, do you recompense for your... That's a great point, yeah. Like, yeah, and, and when you say that, it's he's just like, no, but, like, didn't expect it. Like, almost was like, it's weird, like, this guy wasn't expecting it. Yeah, I, I just um, think... That might be enough of a... That's a yeah, to give to advantage, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 27. 27. Oh! <laughs> he only notices at the last minute what you're doing, but that by that point, it's too late. And as you go to grab, your hand passes through the outfit and catches on something underneath it, and you can tell that it's um, illusory. The outfit's illusory. It's the disguised self spell. Um, and you see the figure kind of just, like, stops, and is like, ah, you got me. And you watch as the clothing ripples away and a green skinned tiefling, skin's tiefling, tiefling. <laughs> with gold horns, uh, with the jagged elemental stony horns Whoa. and gold jewelry, just goes, hello again. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end today's episode. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> that's where we're going to end. Man, that was just a simple encounter. Yeah. We just. 
Yeah, like, I think like you guys have been on such a paranoid level for the whole of this episode, and then this one thing, Kim was just like, I know that there's something up with this guy. My initial and Kate was just like, Mary, get them! Out the parcel, anonymous. I was like, Yeah. Oh, shit. Tell me we everything don't, about this don't the don't courier people. system here. <laughs> My initial thing, which I was incorrect about, was that it was a message specifically for, for Ophelia, and that's why I was asking, was this a group yeah. thing? Yeah. Um, I was like, we don't so have I, I was on the here. wrong end of it there. <laughs> no one sends us mail. No one no. sends us mail. We'll find out. <laughs> much today. Unfortunately, it's going to be two weeks till we find out what no! is it. Yeah. Yeah. Two week break. We're not but, here next week. Yeah, Calliphorus uh, reappears. But that is going to be it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Oh, oh, very good. Uh, uh, we will be back. Don't forget, you will be able to check out our Insomnia. Uh, we're going to call it. Hopefully. We're going to call it the Althea side quest. It's not a one shot. It's a yes. side quest. Um, that's going to be at Insomnia. Hopefully, that will be up on YouTube. We'll um, do our best to upload it, yes, if, if possible. So you can check that out uh, with our guests, Jennifer English and Alia, Aliona Baranova. Um, I've got very lazy tongue today. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's going to happen. Um, and then, yeah, High Rollers live show tickets available now. Please. Uh, and that's going to be it for today's episode. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye now. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye.